Vision and Tanning Center. Barb Lynn, Carpet One. Holbert's Motor Cars. Bridget's Brownies. The Intelligencer Record. Tresca's Custom Clothier and Formal Wear. Pewter Cupboard. Waring's Family Home Center. Spartan Chemical. Interlocking Stone Systems. Concepts. Taylor Grand Jewelers. Altec Business Systems. Bucks County Community College. Corporate Flight Concepts. Fred Dean's Family Dealerships Video Gold CB East Stadium Committee Now let's join your hosts Bob Friedman and John Price Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the preview to the big game. Bob Friedman, along with John Price, and we'll have some special guests joining us in a little bit. Mike Sealski and Tim Ford are here today to talk about everything you want to know about Central Bucks West, Erie Cathedral, and the game to be played next at Hershey. John, big event, a lot of things going on. Let's talk a little bit about what we're going to see in this next hour. We've really put together a great show that's going to lead up to the game. We're going to take you right up to kickoff. And we've assembled great content for everyone to watch, whether you've been following the team all season or whether you just started to, to, to click on the TV and you happen to, to come on with the show here. We're going to have a chat with Coach Petten. We're going to talk to Dustin Pachotti. And like you said, we've got an excellent panel of guests that's going to join us. Mike Sealski has followed the Bucks for the Intel and done a sensational job following them. And Tim Ford, who was an, a standout signal caller down at Neshaminy, played at Del Val. Mm -hmm. He's now the color commentator uh, at WMPV. So uh, this is going to be a great show. I'm excited. It's a great show. We're also going to talk a little bit, this of course being the third straight year that West has gone to the uh, Quad A Championships. Talk a little bit about Coach Petten and the mystique of CB West. What is it? What makes it happen? Why uh, have they been so successful all of these years? Yeah, we'll get a chance to look at the big picture of CB West, and then we'll narrow it down for you. We'll take you through the 1999 season, and then we'll talk about individual personnel, not only for CB West, but also for those that don't know a whole lot about Erie Cathedral Prep. We're going to break them down also. And we'll get a chance to talk to some of the players, some of the coaches, some of the people who have made this such a tremendously successful season. But first, why don't we take a break? We'll come back, and we'll tell you all you need to know about CB West. Don't you dare go away. For the best chemical and industrial cleaning supplies on the market today, call Tom Fitzpatrick from Spartan Chemical Company. For the past 45 years, Spartan has provided high-quality products and solid customer service to help you maintain your place of business. Use Spartan products for your daycare center, restaurant, hotel, health club, car dealership, educational facility, grocery store, and more. Call Tom Fitzpatrick at 215-997-0872 to help keep your facility sanitary and clean. Twas the night before Christmas, and quiet like a mouse, were pewter-covered gifts all filling the house. Santa's little helper would bring Baldwin brass and other fine gifts just full of class. With buyer's choice carolers and seagull frames, you know he wasn't bringing just toys and little games. With Vera Bradley clothware so beautiful and fair, and scents of holiday collectibles dancing in air. So go to the gift shop for the discriminating buyer to fill all your holidays with pewter-covered attire. Pewter-covered, two miles south of Doylestown on Route 611. Get the look at Doylestown Sports Nutrition and Tanning Center. At the family-owned and operated Doylestown Sports Nutrition and Tanning Center, you'll save 20% or more every day 
on vitamins, herbs, sports nutrition, and diet products. Let Tony and Kara design a custom diet or nutritional program for you. Stop in and check out the latest fitness wear from Hot Skins, Crazy Wear, Body Alive, and Atomic Shoes and others. And you'll look marvelous this holiday season with one month of unlimited tanning for just $69. To get the look, visit Doylestown Sports Nutrition and Tanning Center today. And we are back. Joining us, Mike Sielski from the Intel. We're going to talk a little bit about the Central Bucks West Mystique and what uh, makes Central Bucks West such a tremendous team. Good to have you with us, Mike. Good to be here, guys. Thanks. Well, before we did that, we had a chance to uh, talk to some people. John, uh, the Mystique goes is not just the coaches, it's the players as well. We had a chance to uh, to talk to one of the players today. Yeah, uh, we had a chance to talk. Actually, Bonnie Bleminger did a great piece. Uh, had a chance to talk with Dustin Pachotti. Uh, this West tradition has been very long-standing. It's gone over for, for decades. And at this point in time, really, if you're going to take a snapshot and look at, at a big part of their success, it turns out that Dustin Pachotti certainly is an integral part to what's going on uh, for CB West. Why don't we take a chance and take a look at that uh, interview with uh, Dustin right now? Is Bo our Bonnie Bleminger had a chance to sit down and talk to him? If you don't know him yet, you will. He's the platinum power back, rumbling over starstruck defense. So when we were walking out to the Pensbury game on Saturday, they were all kind of standing around outside their locker room, and uh, they said, "There he is, number 33. That's him." And so I mean, everybody knows who he is. The classic man-child using his six foot three, 245 pounds of talent to average six yards per carry, 100 per game, bringing home about 18 points apiece in their so far perfect season. I've done some Pachati style back. Uh, I, I do whatever I can run out there. I mean, I try to use my speed. Uh, when I have to, I try to use my power. I mean, just whatever comes up. Uh. He's one of the very top players we've had. You know, he's gifted with all kind of natural ability and uh, size and strength and speed and I think he's a street fighter you know he's a tough guy. Dustin's looking at big time college programs at Miami, Ohio State and Syracuse. Programs dedicated to winning like CB West. For now Dustin's attention is right here because this high school football game is about as big as it gets. For TSM Sports I'm Bonnie Bleminger. Real good job, Bonnie. Got a chance to talk to the, one of the premier running backs, Dustin Pichotti. Here where he's headed, he's looking at Ohio State, Syracuse, other schools as well. Uh, he's trying to set a record or, again, rushing record for the season. Mike, you did a great job in writing in the intel about the mystique of, of CB West. Let's talk a little bit about okay. that. Uh, what, what are your impressions from what you've uh, seen and what you've heard? Well, we, got, we had a chance uh, Wednesday night uh, at the office. We brought in five coaches who have, uh, Suburban One League coaches, who have coached against Mike Pettin. And we hosted a little roundtable discussion about, uh, to get their perspective on what they thought um, the West Mystique was all about. And we really got some interesting feedback. Uh, Drew Dara, the longtime Saturday coach who retired two years ago, uh, mentioned the makeup of Doylestown itself, uh, the fact that it's a little city. And he mentioned, he got it kind of sociological on us a little bit. He talked about how, um, uh, the way the community is made up in terms of it being a community in which um, kids don't have to work. There are a lot of upwardly mobile families in the area. So kids don't have to work or don't have to do things that would pull them away from football. But at the same time, there are enough, there's enough of a blue collar ethic there that kids come into CB West football camp knowing, they're, and, knowing and willing to work hard. And uh, it, that combination of things, according to Dara anyway, really goes a long way. Uh, to making West the sort of program it is. Now, of course, there are hundreds of other different reasons. You have tremendous coaching. You have a legacy there. You know, Petten has been successful for a very long time, and that gives him some a lot of credibility, not only with kids but with parents. You know, when he says, you run through a wall, the kid not only runs through the wall, but the kid's parent is behind the kid saying, you better run through that wall. So there's a host of different things that goes into making West what West is. We talked about uh, off the air just before the program, um, and we've talked about this during football games as well. You've got a kid playing for Warrington, or you've got a kid playing for Lenape, or somewhere like that, and you've got a peewee football kid, and you say to the, to the nine-year-old boy, well, what do you want to do? And they don't say, I want to play for in the NFL, or I want to play at Penn State, or I want to play at Notre Dame. They say, I want to play for Coach Patton. Yeah, and I think Patton and the program does a marvelous job of getting 
kids hooked in at a young age. Uh, if you stand on the sideline at a West game, at any point during the regular season, you will see middle school coaches. You will see middle school players. Uh, they get younger brothers of players to be ball boys. Uh, you know, it's, it's a tradition that is just bu has built up in this community over years. Kids get introduced to it at a very young age, and they're basically weaned on it. Uh, they grow up you know, living and breathing West football in this area, and as a result, the tradition kind of perpetuates itself. Based on your research, Mike, do you subscribe to what Drew said? Is that kind of your belief? Oh, well, I haven't done any sort of sociological <laughs> study about this community, but I think what he says has a lot of validity to it. Um, the fact is there are a lot of programs in areas where kids can't play football, where they have to work to help their families out. And the kids in the West School District don't have to do that nine times out of ten. So, you know, Petten's got them, and they, they grow up wanting to play West football, they are then able to play West football when they're in high school. They have the time to do it, and they do it to 100% of their ability. Bob, sense. what's been your impression from following the team over the last couple of years? What do you think sets them apart from the other teams in the area that we've been able to cover? Families. Uh, Mike hits it right on the head. You look at the families. You look from the, from the Baggots to the Moylans to the Potters to the Wardens. You know, right along the Pichottis, right along Paul Pichotti and Dustin Pichotti, right along the line. You look at names that you mentioned before the show, the uh, Ball Boys or the Bowsers, uh, you or Tim did, uh, and, and you go right along the line. This is not something where the kids come to play football there for two or three years. This is a lifetime. They come back. Yeah, n nobody shows up at CB West interested in football and is, wow, CB West has a great football team. I didn't know that. That never happens. Uh, that's, that, it's a great way to end this particular segment. That's a little bit about the Mystique. We're, now we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then three of us are going to come back, and we're going to recap this great 1999 season, including last week's thriller. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Since 1976, Nat's Pizza has been serving the tastiest food in Doylestown to the fans of CB West. So kick off tonight's game by picking up a delicious pizza, stromboli, steak, or hoagie from Nat's Pizza in Doylestown. Order a large pizza now and ask for your 10 wings free. Stop by and say hi to Nat, Tim, and the gang today. Nat's Pizza, 138 West State Street, Doylestown, 215-345-8822. Harris Oldsmobile on North Broad Street in Lansdale is now the area's newest Buick dealer. Stop in and see the large selection of Centuries, Regals, Park Avenues, and the all-new 2000 LeSabre. And don't forget the beautiful pre-owned domestic and imported cars you'll find at Harris. As the area's premier Oldsmobile dealer for over 40 years, Harris also has the full line of Oldsmobile vehicles in stock for your immediate delivery. For large selection, great prices, and outstanding service, visit the new Harris Oldsmobile Buick in Lansdale today. Ventresca's of Doylestown is a proud sponsor of Central Bucks West football. Visit Ventresca's and see the fine selection of dress and casual ready-to-wear clothing. Handcrafted suits, slacks, jackets, and Allen Edmonds shoes complete the look at Ventresca's. Select from a wide variety of fine fabrics and allow our experts to custom tailor your next suit. All custom clothing is created and designed on the premises at Ventresca's. Don't forget to reserve your millennial tuxedo package now. Our large selection of formal wear is on site at the Ventresca Warehouse in Doylestown. Visit Ventresca's of Doylestown, custom clothier and formal wear. Bucks County's leading installer of paving stones and wall systems, Pave Tech Paving Systems, has now become Interlocking Stone Systems. The hardscape specialists of Interlocking Stone Systems have been serving Bucks County for more than 12 years. Give your family more living space with a variety of landscape treatments, such as a patio, driveways, walkways, and pool decks. Enjoy big savings right now on fall construction of a brand new patio you'll enjoy next year. Interlocking Stone Systems of Doylestown. Add beauty, practicality, and value to your home now. Welcome back. Bob Friedman along with John Price. Mike Sielski is with us. Tim Ford will be joining us in a little while. We've got everybody here today. Let's talk a little bit about the season in, in retrospect. A great year, guys, no question about it. Third straight year that they're going for Central Bucks West, going for all the marbles. Mike, you've covered them all year long. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the high points of the season. Well, I think... The, the team's first big test came, I guess, the fifth week of the season against Neshaminy. Um, Neshaminy had done a little bit of talking during the week. They were 4-0 heading into the game. 
Um, and West came out and just obliterated them. They won the game 38 nothing. They held Nishamni to about <clears throat> 68 yards, 63 yards, I believe, of total offense. Uh, and, and just blistered them up and down, up and down the field. Phil DiGiacomo had 218 yards of total offense. Uh, it was really a dominating performance, and it was really the first real, true, dominating performance up and down the year. They played well against Ben Salem and Spurts before that, but that was the first game where they really seemed to put it all together. Uh, and then you kind of move through, and they had a shutout streak of four games in a row. Uh, scoring, they scored 42 points each week for three straight weeks. Uh, and all that kind of led up to the North Penn game at the end of the season, the quote unquote game of the century as it was called. Um, and they came out and won the game 17-7, to seven, uh, controlled the ball for all of two play, all except two plays in the fourth quarter. Uh, ran a 19 play drive in the fourth quarter that chewed up about nine minutes and about 70 yards to, to end the game. And they've pretty much been cruising since then up until last week when they ran into a real good Becca team who, who had them on the ropes until about seven minutes to go in the game. What do you think was the significance of the North Penn game? I think that was the first time that we had an opportunity to see Dustin Pachati for any length of time on the defensive side of the ball. Dustin had a terrific defensive game uh, against North Penn. Um, he likes to play fullback. He likes to run the ball. Um, I don't think there's any secret about that. And he got a chance to run the ball. I believe 34 times in that game, and he stood out defensively in terms of what West was able to do in shutting down Heike Johnson and Mike Capusta and North Penn able to run the ball. Um, no team has been able to run the ball this year at all against West. Uh, only one back has had 100 yards against them. That was an upper derby back in the first game of the season, and the only reason that he got 100 yards was because he carried the ball an entire drive against West's second team defense late in the game after West had put, pretty much put it away. So. You know, West run defense has just been outstanding all year. Their defense in general has been outstanding all year. It's funny, going into the last week's game and doing the broadcast, Tom White and I sat there at the end of the third quarter, and we both agreed on one thing. They were behind, but they were controlling the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if not for a couple turnovers in the first half and then another turnover in the second half, two fumbles and an interception, uh, West was on its way to putting points on the board you know, early and often in that game. And as it was, they put him on the board late in that game through a couple Pachati touchdowns and the Camber and Carry. They've been able to move the ball against pretty much everybody this year. The only thing that has stopped them has really been themselves. Uh, against Council Rock, they won 17 nothing. They turned the ball over early in that game. Against Becca last week, again, turned the ball over early, and that kind of got them back on their heels a little bit. Um, but the only team that's really been able to stop West's offense have been the Bucks themselves. I think 10 out of the 14 games this season, they were out penalized mm -hmm. um, against their opposition. And, and you also mentioned the turnovers, which seem to have kind of plagued them all season. I think you go back to September the 18th uh, against Ben Salem as the last time West went through a game without having a turnover. Exactly. And I mean, a lot of that is, I mean, Dustin is getting the ball 30 times a game. And every team that West plays knows he's going to get the ball 25 to 30 times a game. And teams put eight or nine guys you know, sometimes 10 or 11 between the tackles within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And every kid who hits Dustin is trying to knock the ball out of him. It's a lot of hands to be exactly. reaching in. Yeah. So he's going he's gonna to put the ball on the ground. That's, that's going to happen. You make a good point, though, Mike, because that's really the only thing that has stopped West that we've seen so far. Mike Gregoric obviously had a great game at linebacker, but from a team perspective, Central Bucks West really has been able to shut themselves down. And I think the more, almost the more important thing is that West is not a one-dimensional team. They can throw the ball. Um, the back-to-back -back games against uh, North Penn in the regular season, the final regular season game, and then against Penridge, you saw quarterback Mike Oriel uh, throw a touchdown pass to Ted Kenyon in each one of those games. And in neither case was there a, an opposing defensive yep. player anywhere within 25 yards of Ted Kenyon because West and Petten work you like they're a heavyweight boxer. They pound you to the body, pound you to the body, and then go for the haymaker. And no team, it seems, is ready for that haymaker when it comes. They run a play-action pass, and boom, all of a sudden, Kenyon can moonwalk into the end zone. Well, we get a little ahead of ourselves. We're going to talk about personnel later, but I do want to touch on one thing. Pachati gets a lot of play, no question about it. Camburn, as we call Mr. Excitement, gets a lot of play. The one who doesn't get a lot of play is Mike Oriel. And I think he's a major, obviously being the quarterback, major cog to this team. I think there's an impression that anybody could play quarterback for West. That anybody could just turn around, hand the ball off to Dustin Pachotti or Dave Camber or Phil Giacomo, and, and that's it, because you only have to throw the ball five times a game. Well, Mike Oriel's thrown for 1,000 yards, more than 1,000 yards this season. He's thrown for 10 touchdowns. He completes 50% of his passes. He can run a little bit. He is a very good player who's going to get some serious Division I looks next season. And if Erie Cathedral Prep thinks they can come into this game and just decide, okay, we're going to try and take Pachati away and not worry about the quarterback, 
they're wrong. Mike, what were your favorite performances, not just from Mike Oriel, but maybe from some of the other um, West offensive and defensive units? Uh, well, Andrew Elsing has just had a tremendous season. Uh, in a game against Central Bucks East, he, bl he blocked and caught a punt in one motion and took yeah. it 50 yards for a touchdown, which was an outstanding play. The Giacomo's game against Neshaminy was just terrific. He returned punts, kickoffs, caught passes, uh, ran for touchdowns. It was just an awesome display of all-around ability. And you can pick any number of games that, that Pachotti or Oriole have had this season. I thought that uh, Callahan had a tremendous mm -hmm. game last week. He, Ryan, he's, he's, a, he's another unsung He's hero. a very underrated linebacker. A lot of people <laughs> talked about Mike Gregoric going into that Becca High game. I thought Brian Callahan played just as well as Gregoric, if not better. Mike, through, through the course of the season, what do you characterize as maybe the team's worst performance? Who do they have the most difficult time with? I, I think... Their, their worst performance either was probably their, the first game of the season uh, against Upper Darby, a 54-27 win. Uh, they were dropping a lot of passes. They turned the ball over frequently. Uh, yeah, they scored 54 points, but they also gave up 27. They just didn't look sharp. Um, there have been times throughout the season where one facet of their game has not looked sharp. Council Rock, the offense didn't look particularly good. The offensive line has had some, some shaky times here and there. Um, and again, of course, Becca last week had them on the ropes for 41 out of the game's 48 minutes. Um, I, I really haven't seen, maybe outside of the Neshaminy game, there hasn't been a game where, the, where West has really put it all together. And I think Petten would agree with me in saying that. And I know he wants to see them do that in this final game. Um, they were almost flawless last year against Newcastle in the championship. Well, speaking of Mike Petten, we're going to take a break. And we'll, after we come back, we're going to get a chance to talk to the longtime legendary coach of Central Bucks West, Coach Mike Petten. We'll take a break and be right back with that. Don't go away. There is a better way. Meta Digital Copiers and Network Printers from all tech business systems. Network ready, scan once, print many, with finishing capabilities that make life easier. Meta from all tech business systems. Knowledgeable, experienced people who make digital technology work for your business. Meta Digital Copiers and Network Printers from all tech business systems. Better choice, better decision. Holbert Motor Cars was here when the Volkswagen was first introduced to America. Today, Holbert features the newest Volkswagen editions that will take you into the new millennium. But no matter the shape of Volkswagens to come, the Holbert mission will continue to be their commitment to personalized customer service and offering some of the most reliable, safe, and dependable cars in the world or anywhere else. Arnold's Family Shoes in the Doylestown Shopping Center wants to wish the CB West Bucks good luck. Since 1984, Arnold's Family Shoes has been known for service. They are the experts on hard-to-fit feet, carrying men's, women's, and kids' shoes from Floorshine, Timberland, Sperry, Hush Puppies, Rika, Naturalizer, Rockport, Converse, Keds, Stridewright, and more. For great service and selection, visit Arnold's Family Shoes in the Doylestown Shopping Center. The ancients called diamonds splinters of stars. To others, they were tears of the gods. The Greeks believed the fire of a diamond reflected the unquenchable flame of love. Through the ages, nothing has captured the fire of man's passion like the fire of a diamond, the ultimate symbol of love. Only a diamond is forever. Visit Taylor Grand Jewelers in Doylestown for fine diamond jewelry. And welcome back to the pregame show of the big game of the year, the Quad A Championship game to be played next in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Of course, the uh, central figure in all the Central Bucks West teams over the past 30, 30 years plus has been Coach Mike Patton Sr. He's been to five, this is his fifth game, fifth championship game. He's been to, they've won three of the previous four, including going up against the Erie Cathedral way back when. Bonnie Bliminger had a chance to get out, catch up to Coach Petten and talk to him. You know, you're a marked man after you've been to so many of these games, especially he's in the unique position of being in his third consecutive championship game. Bonnie talked about that and the rigors of preparing the problems that you run into. Uh, let's listen to Bonnie and Coach uh, Mike Petten. Doing it the first year was tough. The second year, you know, we were just set up for, you know, a letdown coming in the third year. You know, teams have lined up, come after us for everybody's Super Bowl, but we, we've avoided it. You know, it's, it's amazing. And as I say, most of the credit goes to the kids. 
you're preparing for a team you haven't faced since 1991. What's their offensive attack? How do you prepare for that? Uh, it's tough. Uh, back at Catholic, we had a lot more film. North Penn, you know, we knew one another pretty well. Uh, Erie Cathedral Prep. Uh, one bonus is we had some film on them last year. Comparing them with this year, they haven't changed that much. Nothing fancy. Uh, you know, very soundly coach. One of their coaches, Joe Moore, uh, ex Pitt, Notre Dame, Temple coach, has put a lot of linemen in the NFL. He's their defensive coordinator. Uh, he's part of an excellent uh, staff. Uh, their players are, are gifted to have a tremendous quarterback. Uh, deadly accuracy. I mean, and, and that's one of our problems lately. You've seen our, our secondary has, has gotten uh, drilled. So we're going to have to play great pass defense, put, a, put up a great rush. They also have balance like Becca Catholic. They have an excellent running game. Defensively, they're big. You know, we have this mystique, the big bad bucks. Uh, people must be using last year's roster. We're not that big. Stevie West is now known nationally. What does that say to you about Pennsylvania and Suburban One football? Well, it's a, a source of pride, you know, for a long time. I just wondered about the brand of football we played, and then they started with state championships. You know, could we uh, match up with the North Hills and Northern Alleghenies and the uh, Erie Cathedral Preps? And, we, you know, we were uh, winners of mythical championships, but never on the field. So when we accomplished that, that gave us, I think, credibility and validity for all those other teams in the 70s that said, hey, they were pretty good. As far as where we rank nationally, who can say about that? You know, I've had people that know football, college coaches watch film with some of these great teams that get ranked and watch our teams and say our guys can play with anybody. I think last year, uh, yeah, it was last year, Joe Paterno, on, upon watching the state title game, made the comment it was the best high school team he's ever seen. Now, fortunately, that was a superlative game. Uh, we don't play on that level all the time, but, you know, that, that's something that makes you feel, you know, it's very gratifying. You know, there's so much time and effort goes into this. The, you know, the expression, the joy of victory and agony of defeat, that's the worst feeling, uh, to lose and look back and, and, and say that, you know, you, you, you sowed your own seeds, seeds of, of defeat. So. Uh, that's why we always try to be prepared, get the kids prepared, the coaches prepared. Coaches have to set the example. You know, we challenge our senior leaders. And I know it's a long season, 15 games, three years in a row. I mean, I used the analogy not long ago, it's like a marathon. I mean, after you get to 20 some miles, you know, it, it's a, the battle is mental. Mm -hmm. You know, physically, uh, you know, that's a problem too, but uh, just the mental toughness when you want to quit, when you're tired. But you do that be, for the, those moments of uh, opportunities you have on Friday nights or Saturday afternoons so to play in a, you know, an exciting game and hopefully come out with a victory. And then you look back and say, hey, you know, it couldn't have happened unless we invested you know, the hard work. Talking to your, to your former and to your current players, they talk about the wins, but they also talk about the time that you put into them and how you stay in contact with them. It's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, any coach that's been involved in, in a sport, whether football be otherwise, it spends a lot of time with kids. You know, uh, I went in this to be a teacher and, and, and you know, coaching I liked also, but, but the two are, are intertwined and they, they, don't, they don't stop. You know, once you leave the classroom, uh, the teaching doesn't stop. And this year, hopefully, there were a lot of lessons other than what happened on the football field uh, that have occurred and you don't know if, uh, they sink in, but when kids go on in life and come back and say that uh, the program and the experiences and the lessons have served them well in their family, in their line of work, uh, and in some cases those that continue playing football, you know, it gives you a sense of satisfaction that the money can't buy. 33 years of memories. Any favorites? Well, the, you know, the way my memory is slipping, it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it leaves out a lot of years, but. Uh, you know, just going back to the 91 victory, the, you know, the first time we had to prove it on the field, and, and we wondered, you know, could we compete? And we beat a pretty good Erie Cathedral prep team. That was a great, great uh, memory. The, the 91, uh, or uh, sorry, the 93 game we lost to the number one team in the country uh, in defeat, that was, uh, that was North Hills. And we had a loss that year and played a couple good games. and. 
found ourselves in a state title against the number one team and an overwhelming underdog, which doesn't happen too often, and we relish that. It's easy to be an underdog. And we played a super game, and we're winning 14-0 uh, with uh, less than five minutes, got beat 15-14. But uh, uh, the effort the, the kids gave that day, uh, you know, and we're, we're as proud, uh, the coaches that were involved, the kids in that game as uh, in any win. So, that, you know, that was a great moment. Uh, you know, the overtime game, the Central Dolphin. <laughs> Does it get any better than that? And some people said this game, Becky Catholic, was better than that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's tough to evaluate them when you're on the sideline. You've been doing this now for 33 years. Will we see a 34th? Uh, you know, like the last couple of years, um, you know, I'm going to think about it. You know, there's a lot of things that, uh, to take into consideration. You know, it, uh, Joe Paterno, 72 years old, God bless him. I can guarantee I'm not going to last that long. <laughs> I asked Coach Petten, after all these games and all these championships, do you still get nervous? Of course, he said. If not, there's something wrong. But too much? Well, that's what happens when you miss a six-foot putt with a dollar on the line. If history is any proof, he's got nerves of steel. For TSM Sports, I'm Bonnie Blimiger. Great job, Bonnie. Bonnie Blimiger, always good doing the good interviews. And a camera person there, Kevin McGorry, getting some great shots. We don't say enough about our camera people. What a, what a super job they all do all during the football <coughs> season. Guys, I've said it during broadcasts, I've said it on these various shows, a good to coach is not just a coach. He's not just a guy who goes out there diagrams in the X's and O's. It goes far beyond that when you get into high school. He's, he's a teacher, as he, he or she is a teacher as well. I think that Mike Pettin shows that, that uh, his first thing is to teach the kids how to play. I agree with you uh, very much, Bob. I mean, it's, it's amazing how when you talk to West alums who have played football, how many of them say, you know, I really learned a lot from the guy, and I, I didn't realize what I learned until I wasn't around him anymore. Uh, you hear former West players who go on to play football in college and say, you know, God, you know, compared to, compared to West, this is easy. You know, preparing to play college football is nothing compared to what it was playing for West. So he does a lot of teaching, and I think it, it seeps, in, seeps in on these kids without their ever realizing it. In a lot of cases. Yeah, absolutely. As someone who didn't necessarily play a lot, but uh, was on a roster that Coach Petten coached, and also I was an assistant coach there for two years, just to see the interaction isn't the X's and O's and, and calling the plays. He really has a, a way about himself that if he were to tell a kid anything, you, you automatically believe it. He's obviously got a proven method and a vision, like you would if you were a CEO of a, of a major corporation, and every one of the employees buys into that because it's, it's got a proven track record to have had national rankings year after year after year. This is probably the 15th year of the USA Today, and, and every other year, practically, they're, they're ranked again on that high of a level. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And the things that go on while you're there, exposed to the program, continue forever. You have discussions with your, your friends or your buddies that were on the team, and you still talk about the stuff that you did, and, and you catch yourself remembering things and, and using things that, that Turns out you picked up from Coach Petten about preparation and discipline and, and, and going for things that uh, with a, a certain single-bindedness. It's really a, a, a great experience. Every single kid on the roster, whether it's Dustin Pachotti or the last kid on the bus, is going to take something away, and that's really what makes it special. Yeah, I think that uh, we also talk about the two words that come to my mind when I think about C.B. West and Petten are, are discipline and precision. Uh, I agree with you. His detail-orientedness uh, is amazing. Uh, if he wants a kid to run a seven-yard out and the kid runs six yards in practice and runs the out, he is yelling and screaming and in that kid's face, I told you to run seven yards, not six, not eight, not seven and a half. And that's what wins football games. Well, Mike, we thank you for joining us. Uh, good insight into it. Thank Mike Sealski, a fine writer for the Intel. Thank you very much. When we come back, we will have Tim Ford, who has dried his tears over the Nishamani game. We'll be talking to Tim about Erie Cathedral, about the keys to this game, and about some of the players who make Central Bucks West the great team that they are as they head into the Quad A championship game. Don't go away. We'll be right back. From the fields to the factories, from the job site to the open range, we've been going to work with professionals for more than four generations. And whether it's our traditional Carhartt workwear or rugged outdoor wear, one thing's for sure. As long as there's work, there'll be Carhartt. Carhartt, original equipment for the American worker. Visit Waring's to save on Carhartt clothing.
Carpet One. The Central Bucks East Patriot Stadium Committee wishes the Central Bucks West football team best of luck in the state championship game. We would like to recognize the school board directors for their support, leadership, and connection of a new stadium at Central Bucks East, a project that will benefit the entire school district. Special thanks to. For more information, check out our website at www.cbestadium.org. Corporate Flight Concepts provides a smarter charter service for local businesses and private parties traveling in the Mid-Atlantic and New England states. Corporate Flight Concepts handles all of the flight department duties. They'll pick up their shareholders at the local airport that's close to their house or office and deliver them promptly to the airport closest to their actual destination. This is a perfect opportunity for somebody whose time is valuable. And we are back and joining us, a legend at Neshaminy High School, now broadcaster for WNPV, Tim Ford. Tim, good to have you with us Thanks, today. Bob. Good to be here. Let's talk a little bit about, you've had a chance to see the games as have, as have we. I want to talk a little bit about, we talked about the coach, we talked about the mystique, but it takes the players to play the game. Uh, Wes has got a great complement of players. No one stick-out person, but let's talk a little bit about uh, the makeup of CB West, their personnel, what makes them the team they are? Well, of course you have Dustin Pachotti, and, and Erie Cathedral Prep is going to have to find a way to try to stop Dustin Pachotti, as as every team this year. Uh, Dustin makes their offense go, and as Mike talked about, the play action feeds off of Dustin Pachotti. Um, he's outstanding back. He's a do-everything guy for you. He's got a chance to break a couple records. Uh, you can think he might be a little long shot, but he had 236 yards last year. He needs 232 to break Armstrong's single-season rushing record five TDs, he would break his own record of 41 touchdowns. So he can do that in a single game. He has that kind of an ability for the, uh, for the Bucks. Um, their quarterback, Mike Gordon, I really like the way Mike plays the game. Yeah. I'm playing, being a former quarterback, I understand what he's doing out there. And I think it's always about Mike not trying to make all the big plays, but don't cost us a game. Don't make any major mistakes out there for us. Don't hurt us anywhere on the field. And I think Mike does that real well. He gives the ball to Dustin. He works the play action directs the team very nicely. I thought his two-minute drive last week against Becca Catholic before the half was, was very well done. He showed me something last week that I hadn't seen before because you don't see a, a West quarterback under a fierce rush usually. He was nailed early in that game and you could see the adjustments that he seemed to make through the game to set up the two-minute drive, to set things up and was fearless in the face of that rush. And, you know, a quarterback who's used to not seeing a big rush around him in a game like that can fall apart. Well, that's a good point, Bob, because the key play in the game really came down to that third and ten late in the game. Uh, Orioles under some pressure. He steps up in the pocket and finds Callahan in the yep. flat, and that sets up Pachotti's tying touchdown. I mean, that's the key to the game, and it's a good job by Orioles. He only completed four passes. But that one pass he completed, that was really the key to the win, I felt. Tim, what do you think about Orioles' running ability? I think there were five games or so this year where he was able to, to gain more than 30 yards rushing over the course of a game. Do, do you like him as a runner? Yeah, I think he's a good extra dimension for the Bucks there. I mean, uh, he's not as good of a runner as a Potter, not as fast as a Travis Blumgren was, but he does just enough to keep a defense honest, and I think that's going to be important today. Uh, Phil DiGiacomo, we're not sure of his status. I think there have been conflicting reports. I think Phil is very optimistic. The coaching staff kind of wants to take a wait and see. What do you know about that, and, and what, how do you think that will impact the game? Well, I think being a former player, I think Phil wants to play. I mean, it's a big game, and he wants to be a part of it, and he's going to do all he can to get ready for this game. Uh, I think Coach Pettin, being as conservative as he is, is going to look at it from a coach's perspective and say, if he's not 100% against a good team like your Cathedral Prep that throws the ball very well, I might not be able to afford to have him in the secondary because if he's not at top speed, it could cost us. And I also have Dave Camburn, who's playing great. So why should I lessen my offensive attack with a guy who may not be 100%? Only Phil knows if he's going to be 100% today. Now, I want Bob to talk about Mr. Excitement because that's his guy right there. What, what, what's, your, what's your impression of Dave Camburn? Dave Camburn is a game breaker. He, the best compliment I can give him is that he's a Scotty Warden type of a ball player. 
he took that punt last week, breaks to the left side, saw a little bit of a sliver, a great block by Polena, sets him free. And once he got into the open, nobody was going to catch him. Dave Camburn gives you that killer speed and that instinct to find the opening. Tough runner, too. Oh, and he's a, he's a tough runner. As I say, Scotty Warden all over again. He just, uh, you know, in a, in a different person at that point. But let's talk about some of the unsung heroes. We talk about Angelo Polena. How about Brian Callahan, Andrew Elsing, uh, Ted Kenyon, There's so, and, and the offensive line. We, we don't say enough about... Uh, the, the guys in the trenches. Especially after what they had to come against from last year. I mean, those kids were really thrown into a difficult spot with how well that line played last year, and these kids had to come in and, and take over for that, and they're, they're not as big. Uh, they're not, the four guys went Division One last year off that line. They're right. not going to have four guys go Division One this year, but they're solid up front. They have the great technique coached by Mike Carey. They do a good job, and uh, they'll be a key today. You know, if they can run the football the way they have in the past, uh, those guys have done a good job, and they did a good job last week against a bigger Becca High team. Defensively today, Tim, who do you like on that side of the ball? For CB West? Who stands out for West? I, I love the way Brian Callahan plays yeah. the game, and he talks about himself being a quarterback on defense. And the, last week I remember a play where he actually physically took Ryan Bloomgren off his right side and threw him to his left yeah, right into where the play went. I mean, that's the kind of guy you need out there who understands what's going on, understands the game, and really can direct the defense. Elsing. He realized he made a mistake when he roughed the kicker, but he made up for it when he sacked the quarterback on that drive when Becca was up 14-7. If they go in and score there, they're up two scores. It's a different game, but he gets up the sack, and then they go on that game-tying touchdown drive. I guess the only thing you might say is not as positive as could be is their punting game. They changed punters through the year. West has been doing some of the punting uh, of late. That might be their only weak spot that I can see. Yeah, the, the kicking game last week hurt him a little bit, especially the long punt return by Scipio that set up a score, and that put him ahead 14-7. And, and Coach Patton, you know he hates to see those kind of mistakes. You guys talked about turnovers earlier, you know, 26 and 14 games. That's not West football, and special teams breakdown is not West football either. They'll correct that this week. I like having Dave Camburn back there as the punter, though. I think he gives you a dimension that when he bobbled the snap, he bobbed, that was a great, first That down. was an incredible but that's play. That's a very dangerous dimension. He's a dangerous special teams player. Yeah, it's good to have a smart, intelligent football player back there who knows what to do. If something does break down, he made something happen. And, and not enough is said about Bob Tumley and what he's done in directional kicking. He has just put, taken it to a whole new art. Yeah, he really has made it an art form. I mean, something you don't see a lot of, but he's been able to do it, do it well, and it gives West an extra dimension. They got a turnover off it last year in the state finals. Well, we've talked about Central Bucks West, who they are, what they are. We all know about them. But what about those uh, kids from uh, the northwest corner of the state? When we come back... We're going to tell you everything you need to know about Erie Cathedral Prep. So when you watch the game, you're going to know all you need to know. No, all you need to know. Yep, all you need to know. Don't go away. We'll be right back. It's Jenny, your ex-fiance. Um, listen, I know I left you at the altar and ran off with that musician, but that was all before you became a Fred Bean salesman. So I was wondering, is there any chance you'd take me back? Please call. Driving excitement has never been easier because right now you can lease the 2000 Pontiac Grand Am for just $225 a month with no down payment and no security. Only at Fred Bean's Pontiac in Doylestown. Portable Concepts is an authorized Nextel dealer providing the full line of Motorola digital cellular phones featuring unlimited instant communications through Nextel's exclusive Direct Connect digital two-way radio feature. For a limited time, Portable Concepts can provide the i1000 Plus with unlimited digital two-way and 600 digital cellular minutes for only $69.95 per month. Portable Concepts is also offering a $50 service credit on the activation of four or more i500 or i1000 Plus units. Portable Concepts and Nextel, how business gets done. Your first choice for the first two years, Bucks County Community College. Bucks is the first step to a four-year education. We offer small classes, a first-rate faculty that really gets to know you, a wide variety of courses to choose from, all in an affordable tuition. Whether you're interested in our transfer programs that will allow you to transfer to a four-year college or occupational programs for job training and upgrading, Bucks has what you're looking for. And with the new Upper County Campus in Percocy, is more convenient than ever. Registration for spring classes is going on now. To register or to find out why Bucks should be your choice for your first two years, call 215-968-8100. That's Bucks County Community College, 215-968-8100.
And we are back. Bob Friedman along with John Price and uh, Tim Ford has joined us from WNPV. Tim, we talked about CV West in the last segment. And now let's talk about a team we don't know that much about, but certainly have put up some phenomenal numbers, equally undefeated uh, from Erie, Erie Cathedral Prep. Yeah, they have a, a 19 starters returning, 10 on offense, 9 on defense. Obviously, having those kids back is what's got them to this point this year. They're led on defense by Joe Dupree, 6'5", 235-pound linebacker, just a junior, all over the football field. Outstanding speed and athleticism on the defensive side of the ball. They've given up less than a touchdown per game. On the offensive side of the ball, they score about 46 points per game. Uh, they can really put up the numbers there. Their quarterback, Eric Carlson, Coach Petten said he's John Elway-like. Strong arm, mobile, can really feel that that can, uh, can hurt them, as, as, especially the way West has played in the secondary. They haven't been very sound in the secondary, according to Coach Petten, mm. and that's always the, the only vote that counts. Uh, they have to shore up that portion of their game because obviously if you have a quarterback who can throw the ball 45, 50 yards, you're susceptible to the big play. Dangerous wideouts also for Erie Cathedral Prep. I know their wideouts combined for 40 catches and they average close to 30 yards per catch and I think they together have uh, uh, 14 touchdowns. Josh, Josh Lustig, number 13, he's a junior also. And the, on the other side, uh, number 11, Ed Hinkle, who's a junior as well. These guys are flyers and, and they've done some damage, especially the kid Hinkle. Um, he's kind of like a Dave Cameron in the fact that he's going to do some nice things on offense, but special teams wise, he handles some of the punting duties, which sounds familiar, mm -hmm. and he returns kicks. As a matter of fact, he's returned six for touchdowns in the last two years and was featured in Sports Illustrated. At one point, he'd returned about five, uh, four kicks for touchdowns out of five possibles. So this kid, and especially with West's special teams difficulties last week, this is a kid at Hinkle, number 11, who, who could see some, some end zone. You may want to see West directional kick, kick away from him. I wouldn't let him touch the football if he's got that kind of ability back there. They're going to try to keep it out of his hands as much as possible. And they have a runner, Demond Sanders, 995 yards this year, missed a month of football, and still almost has 1,000 yards. They have a lot of weapons. He's a preseason All-Stater as a defensive back. They don't even count his ability on the offensive side of the ball. He scored you know, a number of touchdowns. They also have his backup, who's a sophomore, Jawan Walker, who scored 22 touchdowns on the year. So if Sanders isn't running well, they can shift over to Walker. They have a lot of talent on both sides of the ball, and Coach Patton's concerned, and, and rightfully so. I mean, this is a good team. They were in the Western Final last year, lost to Newcastle, and I think that's an advantage for Coach Patton. He's got to see him on tape a couple more times than uh, Erie Cathedral Prep has seen West. He's got that tape of last year's Newcastle game. That'll play to his advantage a little bit. We know how good Coach Patton and Coach Carey are at breaking down films. Do you think that uh, playing a big, strong team like Becca High is going to be a help? And the scare that they got, especially from Becca. Absolutely. Up front, because Becca High you know, had about uh, a couple guys that went over 260, had one 300-pound guy, and Erie Cathedral has the same thing. They have four guys, 265 or better, on their offensive line. They're huge up front, so West will use their quickness and speed on defense, the techniques and the schemes that Coach Carey uses to try to get some pressure on Carlson. That's really the only way you're going to stop a good court. If you give a guy with that kind of arm strength time to throw, he will eventually pick you apart. Mike Mishler, the head coach there, only his second season. He's ninth ranked in the country, according to USA Today. Not a bad position to be in for a second-year guy. He's 30 years old, had played at Erie Cathedral Prep, went on to be a lineman at James Madison. I had a chance to talk to him a little bit. He's been breaking down tape till 2 a.m. He claims he hasn't seen a weakness uh, from CB West, so it'll be interesting to see how he game plans. They've got a lot of talent. He said they're a young team. They're a little bit excitable. They do have some experience. Obviously, the WPIAL is some well-regarded football. However, he wanted it to be very clear to me that they don't lump themselves into the WPIL, WPIAL grouping. They don't, the WPIL doesn't want them in their league. They haven't asked them to be in their league. And he kind of sees that there's an attitude from that group that he doesn't want connected to the Erie Cathedral Prep team. He says, you know, we're, we're not cocky, we're not overconfident, we realize it's an uphill battle, but this is a second year head coach, but he's got loads of talent out there. Joe Moore, Coach Pett mentioned in the interview, has been an assistant at some top-notch programs, so he's in his second year, but I'm sure he relies on the expertise of Joe Moore in, in his game planning. What do you see Erie Cathedral Prep doing to try to whittle away at this, the, the West team? You mentioned that there's no weakness, and I would think 44 other teams that have played West would agree with that. There's a... It's tough to find a hole in that, in that armor over on West. And uh, I think they'll try to get Sanders going with the running game early. But I really think they're going to hurt West. If they're going to hurt him, it's going to be in the passing game. West has been so good in the past. That no matter who the running back is, if it's Heike Johnson or a Troy Swittenberg, they shut you down. They just take out a good running back. Dave Wilson, number one in the state, only had 66 yards last week on 20 carries. West did a great job against him. 
I think they'll use Carlson's arm strength to try to get some big plays against West, and that'll try to keep him in the game. Well, uh, Erie Prep also, after winning by an incredible score over a good Shenley team, they beat them 70 to nothing, moved on. But they also are coming off a game that was a little bit scary against Woodland Hills. And both teams this week had come from behind victories to get to the finals. And if you look at Erie Cathedral's prep schedule, they've had some games where they've scored 50 points, they've scored 60. You mentioned the 70-point win. But against some of the top teams, State College, Holidaysburg, and Woodland Hills, who are ranked in the state, they've never scored more than four touchdowns. As we go out, let me ask you this question. This is the third straight year that West has played, we've said that enough times, in the championship game. The last two years, honestly, have been kind of cakewalks, especially last year where it was a blowout. How would you compare Erie Cathedral with the last two, Newcastle and the previous uh, the, uh, team that played uh, West? Well, it, it sounds like on paper that it's going to be a game. I don't think you're going to see what you saw the last two years. Erie Cathedral sounds like they just have too many weapons, too much speed and athleticism on defense to allow West too many big plays. So I think it's going to be a very good competitive football game. Very interesting. It sounds good to me. It does indeed. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to do the keys to the game and maybe even a prediction or two. You never know. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Bridget's Brownies offers a selection of memorable, impressive, and delicious gift boxes of brownies for your favorite friends, most important clients, and dearest family members. Or perhaps treat yourself to something very special. Our rich and decadent versions of the classic American treat, made with fresh local ingredients and a blend of three superior Belgian chocolates. Call 215-340-1000 and order your Bridget's Brownies today. For all the color and excitement, the real story behind the action, turn to the sports pages of the Intelligencer Records. From local youth sports results to local high school action to the pros, it's all there every day in the Intelligencer Record. Plus, columnist, game summary, stats, box scores, and all the inside info you want about your favorite teams and players. Read the Intelligencer Record every day. For home delivery, call 345-3020. Well, we're back, and we are almost ready for the kickoff to the big game. Bob Friedman, along with John Price and Tim Ford, we don't have a whole lot of time as, we, as kickoff does approach, but let's talk about some of the keys to this game, Tim. Well, I think West turned it over last week. They avoid the turnovers, and they play their brand of football. I think they have a good shot to uh, have their third straight state title. Both of these teams are nationally ranked. They're both touting their defenses as, as the, the strength of their, both of their games. Neither team necessarily throws the ball a lot. I think you're going to see a lot of DeMond Sanders. You're going to see a lot of Dustin Pachotti. Um, from Erie Cathedral, they, they run a very basic offensive set. You're going to see some, some pitches and some sweeps. Um, they've got a lot of returning guys. West really is going to have their hand, hands full. They need to make sure they contain Ed Hinkle on special teams. Pray that they don't have the fumbles to come along, and they need someone to compliment Dustin Pachotti, who's going to probably carry the ball about 30 times. Erie Cathedral's going to try to, I think, exploit the West secondary a little bit um, and capitalize on, on any turnovers West has. I think one of the keys to the game, in my mind, is going to be my favorite player, Dave Cambry. Um, I think if he can break a couple or break one, it's going to make a big difference. I think the key to the defense is going to be Elsing and Callahan. I think they, they in many respects, make that defense run. Yeah, Callahan, as we said earlier, is the quarterback. He directs the people. Ryan Bloomgren also had a very good game last week as well. And they will have to do some of the same things they did, have done on defense all year. They're going to have to be real quick, real aggressive to get to the football because Erie Cathedral is quick, and they, they can really make some big plays. So they're going to have to hustle and pursue, as they have done all year. I expect the West defense to do nothing short of what they've done all season. And I think one other key is the West defense has only given up 14 points in the fourth quarter all year, and that's in week one when really the game was decided, as Mike talked about earlier. So if it gets into a shootout late in the game, I like the West defense to come up with the big play when they had to, like they did last week. Well, we talked about this right after the, uh, when we were in the press box at Goodman, when uh, Easton had uh, Juan Gaddy, the great running back, and they came into the game saying, oh, nobody stops Juan Gaddy. He ran for 340 yards against Phillipsburg last week, by the way. Phillipsburg was 0-11, but that was another story. I've never seen a team with one player, one star offensive player, be able to beat the Bucks. Yeah, and Erie Cathedral may have more than one weapon, but I think they'll do a good job of trying to take away the running game, 
and force them to beat them through the air. And I think the West secondary, they'll somehow find a way to make the plays, get the tight coverage, and I think they'll get some pressure on the quarterback and try to force him into, into some quick throws. I think you'll find out very quickly in the game how it's going to be going because I think West is going to try and do the ball control thing, try and hold the ball for 10, 12, 13 plays. A lot of Pichotti, some Oriole running the ball a little bit. But you got to watch out for Ten Kenyon, too. He does have a way of slipping out of the yeah. uh, coverage. Who's going to be the new guy to catch that play-action pass? It was Kenyon, it was Elsing, it was Camburn. Maybe we'll see a different guy this week. But if they can shorten the game and, and limit the touches that Carlson gets on the offensive side of the ball, I think that'll be a key for, for West as well. Eric Carlson, number seven, valuable weapon as we're talking about. Probably won't even play college football next year. My understanding uh, is that he'll probably get drafted and play Major League Baseball. But here's a kid who's a, an unbelievable talent. They need to minimize the amount of time he has to work any magic that they have. I agree with that. I also think that another player that we need to watch for tomorrow, although he'll be uh, doing some limited role, uh, in and out is Gavin Potter. Uh, just a great player. Oh, Potter always seems to have a great game in a playoff. Probably the only guy who plays corner and nose guard in the state. Yep, absolutely. Well, we've only got about a minute left. Anybody want to venture some predictions? You made a good, great comment on camera. Why don't you say I, I just said I haven't picked against West all year. I said until I see somebody beat him, I won't pick against him. There's only one game left, and they haven't lost yet, so I'll stick with West. I love the way this coaching staff goes in to prepare for a game. I'm sure that on the western side of the state, the coaches are pouring over videotape also. But knowing that Coach Petten has seen everything that any team has ever had to offer, it would be very difficult for me to go into this game thinking that he hasn't prepared and won't result in the same outcome. Well, I've watched this team all year long, and I'll be quite honest with you. Compared to some of the other championship teams, they're not the fastest, they're not the biggest, they're not the strongest. All they do is win, and they find ways to do it. I think today is going to be the biggest test that they have had in all the three years that they've been in the championship game. Am I predicting a victory? Not necessarily, but I'm predicting it's going to be a great game no matter what happens. Uh, as we move along here, it's time. The ball is about to be teed up. We're about to sit and watch it right along with you folks. Let's go west and see if we can win the third straight championship. Fourth and five tries will be unprecedented. Don't go away. When we come back, we're done for now. We're going to go get our beverage of choice and popcorn and so forth. We're going to watch it. Tim, you're going to be uh, doing the game, so right. your beverage of choice is going to be water. <laughs> But John and I are going to enjoy it right along with you. It's time to play football, time for Quad A Championship Football, West against Erie Cathedral. Don't go away. Kickoff coming right up next. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you at the game. Delphia Cable, serving cable subscribers in Broomall and Montgomery County. Coming up next on the Pennsylvania Cable Network, PCN's exclusive coverage of PIAA Championship Football live from Hershey, the Quad A Finals. PCN's presentation of high school championship sports is underwritten by Montgomery County Community College. Education equals MC cubed. Pennsylvania Cable Television Companies, delivering local, state, and national sports programming. Homework Help on PCN, televised homework assistance for primary and secondary school students. And by a grant from James J. Duratz and Helene Barco Duratz.
Stadium, Chocolatown, USA. Championship weekend rolls on. The main event in Quad A, nationally ranked Central Box West, number three in the country against the number nine team in the country, the champion out of the West, the Ramblers of Erie Cathedral Prep. Delighted to have you an exclusive live cover to the PNAA State Football Championships. Jed Donahue, the coach, Gary Sutton, also Mark Shuey. And you can see that in Erie, they are pumped for this football game. I don't know, Mark, it's about 40-some degrees, wind chill <laughs> in the 20s. Yeah, don't let that fool you. It's in no way warm. But I guess Erie, they're used to winter. This is July in Erie, right? <laughs> Weather like this. Yeah, people are still camping out kidding. overnight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cold yeah. is relative when you come from Erie. So <laughs> let's uh, talk about this game a little bit. For uh, Erie Cathedral Prep, getting here was certainly a goal. They have a great young coach in Mike Mishler. And for Central Bucks West, this is on the pocket schedule that comes out in the middle of the summer. Uh, they're going for a third consecutive state championship. The senior group has never lost a football game. They have won 44 games in a row. Yeah, this group has not lost a game since 1996 when they lost to Plymouth White Marsh. Uh, Central Bucks West, uh, well, they're nationally ranked. A great power, Dustin Bishotti, uh, the, the great fullback who's being scouted by a lot of big Division I programs. But you know what? They are vulnerable. They're vulnerable to the pass attack. They're invulnerable to the big play. So, if I'm Mishler and Erie Prep, I go for the big play, score early, make CB West come from behind, and uh, one thing that you have to be concerned about if you're CB West coach Mike Patton, and that is the turnover ratio. CB West is only a plus one throughout the year, which is relatively low for a championship team, so that means they put the ball on the floor a lot. On the other side, you've got an Erie Cathedral Prep team with Eric Carlson, the quarterback, who's the happiest guy in the world tonight because the wind has gone down here a little bit. He can pass the ball this evening, but he doesn't just have to pass it. Jawan Walker has 1,398 yards and 22 touchdowns to go along with the 21 touchdowns that Carlson has passed for. This is an Erie Cathedral prep team. It's the number one scoring team in the state of Pennsylvania. Number one, one differential. The only question mark is, has their schedule really toughened them enough for this game? Well, that's a good point, Gary. Yeah, only four quad, uh, quad A teams in the District 10. So, uh, yeah, Erie Cathedral Prep may have not seen the level of competition that Central Bucks West has. They've gone out of state, up, upstate New York, to play some teams as well. But, uh, uh, the way they went through and uh, took out w, WPIAL's uh, Woodland Hills, which is, that's a good Woodland Hills team, came into this game undefeated in the Western Final. And uh, Erie Cathedral Prep, big victory over Woodland Hills to get here to Hershey in the championship game. Well, Central Bucks West overwhelmed the opposition here a year ago. That was Newcastle, and it was uh, the 56 to 7, the final. Dustin Pashotti put on quite a show. Maybe the player of the year in this state. Certainly going to be one of the candidates for that particular award. Had five touchdown runs. As you look at Eric Carlson, this is a key to the football game. There's our officiating crew here for this uh, particular game tonight. But Pashotti is a one-man wrecking crew. And, well, when you run the same plays in the same system year in and year out, he's the prototypical big back. You just give the big guy 30, 35 carries and take your chances, and that's what West will do here. Well, two years ago, we watched a Mack truck in the brown and gold named Dave Armstrong. He's now at the University of Michigan. Dustin Bashotti has broken each and every one of his records, rushing, touchdowns, the whole bit. Uh, so Bashotti has eclipsed all of the great Dave Armstrong's records. That tells you how good he is. 236 yards in the championship game last year. He comes to play on the big nights. And it's a matchup of two different styles tonight. Erie Cathedral Prep is going to need the big play tonight. For Central Bucks West, when you talk about Mike Petten, you're talking about blocking, the very best in the state of Pennsylvania. They want the ball, and they want it for long periods of time. And when they do that, they are very, very tough to beat. Well, for Erie Prep, they met uh, C.B. West in 1991 in this uh, particular game, and uh, that was a, a, a good performance for uh, C.B. West. Talk about winning streaks. They've certainly had a lot How about this one, 44 games in a row, but uh, in 1991, they played in this uh, particular game, and it was a 26-14 C.B. West victory. Uh, the wins, uh, it's significant, but not as much as it has been over the last couple of games. Uh, our Triple-A game last night won by Strathaven, 21-7 over West Allegheny, certainly dictated by that. And I think earlier today, Mount Carmel uh, losing to Tyrone by a final of 13-6. Uh, that game was certainly affected, but this seems to be uh, uh, dying down a little bit. It's certainly not where it was. We're going to the uh, center of the field right now. Referee Donald Woodward gathering the captains for the toss. Good luck to you. Good luck to you, man. Good luck to you, man. Good luck to you. Good luck to you, man. Good luck. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Okay, come on in. Shake hands, gentlemen. Okay, fellas, my name is Mr. 
Richard Woodard, the referee, and Mr. Freed is the umpire. Home team's in the black, visiting team's in the white. We're here to play football tonight, gentlemen. The biggest game of your lives tonight. Play football. Okay? You're going to toss, call the coin by dropping. We'll toss it again. You're, you're calling tails. Okay? You win the toss. You like you like to defer. You want to receive this end? Okay? X over here, over here. Okay? Gentlemen. Well, we're gearing up. Central Bex West, Erie Cathedral Prep. Crowd on both sides at a fever pitch. Got to give the Erie fans a lot of credit making a four and a half, five hour ride here to Chocolate Town. They've done that trip an awful lot in recent years for basketball. They have not had to make one from a football championship standpoint since 1991. And uh, we're going to take you around this uh, gorgeous facility. Bowl weekend. It's a bowl atmosphere here on uh, Hershey property. Famous Hershey Park Arena across the way. And we're going to uh, do it like all sporting events start with the uh, national anthem, which we'll get to momentarily. Good night for football. It's a lot warmer, it seems to me, than even this afternoon. Again, the wind, it's still blowing, but not as significant a uh, storyline as we got in two of the games this weekend. All three games have been uh, brilliantly played, as we had thought they might be. Southern Columbia losing to Southside Beaver, 27-21 in single A yesterday. Strathaven winning 21-7 last night. And then earlier today, Tyrone beat Mount Carmel 13-6. Here's our national anthem. history of the PAA State Championship that you get two nationally ranked teams in the same contest. Fox Sports has their national poll and uh, they have West slot at three and Erie nine and USA Today has Central uh, West at uh, three and Erie at nine. Here's the uh, Central Fox West offense in this particular game and again there are the big guys up front. A lot of it's a rebuilt line. You've got Jeff Miskey who's a returner from a year ago but they've replaced Ben Carver went out of the University of Virginia. Only one guy under 200 pounds on that offensive line. Here you see the skill people. Of course, everything centers around Dustin Pashotti, but uh, quarterback Mike Oriel, very, very good quarterback. Doesn't make many mistakes. Throws for over a thousand yards this year. Uh, very good heads up quarterback, veteran QB. And of course, Pashotti with 37 touchdowns this year and 1,669 yards rushing. Those are gaudy figures on anyone's list. Dave Camburn going deep for Central Bucks West along with Zach Ingram. And Tom Morgan set to kick off here for prep. And the much anticipated quad A final is underway as it goes out of bounds and that will give West the ball at the 35 yard line first and 10. 
We're going to talk about this guy a lot. He electrified us a year ago with five touchdowns, Dustin Pashotti. You're looking at really one of the, I think, top ten players in the United States. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. not me talking. These are college coaches That's now. exactly right. I was going to say you can evidence that by the people that are recruiting him. The likes of uh, Iowa, every Big Ten school is going after Dustin Pashotti. There he is, number 33. Ohio State, Iowa, Pitts going after Dustin Pashotti. Miami, uh, they would all love to see Dustin Pashotti uh, come to their school, but uh, well, he's got a big one here tonight. Central Bucks West going for their third consecutive quad A title. <laughs> Unprecedented in the state of Pennsylvania. If you're a guy that likes to run the football, and if you like to watch the football being run, then you're going to like watching Central Bucks West. They average 240 yards rushing a game. Here's uh, here here the Charles defense. Rush, Big War Daddy up front. Get a slow start to this game. This will allow us the opportunity to look at the rest of the Erie defense. Joe Dupree, watch him. One of the real coming stars at the linebacker spot. His father played at prep as well. 85 tackles for Dupree throughout the season. And Sanders and Henkel are dynamic in the secondary. First play of the football game upcoming here. Pitch. This is Camber to the outside. Oh. Has five. Big crushing block. Ten and a first down. A gain of 12 to the 47-yard line. Well, that's textbook CB West football. Seal the You're outside. You're going to see Matt Camber Carey. To the outside. Watch this. Matt Carey, number seven, right there, is keeping his man to the inside. It allows the runner to get to the outside right around the corner, and you see him off to the races. Did you see that block by Dustin Bashotti oh. around the near sideline? Oh. Blew away Tim Dance. 245 Both pounds breath. coming at you with a full head of steam. That's scary. Nothing subtle about this offense for Central Bucks West. It's a system. Same play. They're going to try it the other side. Not the same result, but positive nonetheless for a gain of seven or eight. Little key here in the opening going. Both times where Carey has been has been the side they run to. Number seven, look for him here on the right. He's leading it out for the tight end spot, and then right around the corner, pitch it out, let him run. And here he is going to call a timeout because they're uh, very confused offensively here in the early going. I'll tell you, Central Bucks West head coach, Mike Patton, he's been known to cross things up a little bit whenever people key on Dustin Pashotti or he expects them to key on Pashotti, as I'm sure Erie Cathedral Prep is. They run more, they throw the ball well, and, and they, they use misdirection plays. So uh, Mike Patton's uh, very good at taking the heat off his star player, Dustin Pashotti and dishing the ball around, changing his game plan a little bit. One of the things, too, when you're coaching in a state championship game, Jed, is you're trying to get people to think about things other than that which they prepared for, kind of feeding off what Mark said, and you get them off that, then you maybe come back to what you normally do a little bit later on when the lesson has been forgotten. The other thing about Pashadi, and this is something Mike Pettin had told us that is so remarkable is, considering the year he has had, he has been the mark. Everybody has been keying on him. Eight, nine-man fronts, yet he still has 1,669 yards. But they've been involved in a lot of blowouts this year, so obviously he's not playing in a lot of games in the fourth quarter and a lot in the second half. West had their feet in the fire, though, in the Eastern Final last week. They had to score 19 unanswered points in a three-minute, 19-second window late fourth quarter to get through a tough Bethlehem Catholic outfit, 26 to 14. Looking at second and two at their own, at the Erie Prep 46. Pashani the lone setback, his first carry, and it's a first down carry, a gain of four. This is the thing about him. It, does that look like much? No, but it's still four yards, and it's four really hard yards. Well, look at the straight up blocking, just pushing people straight forward, and you go after it hard and dive for the first down, and you get it. Devon Sanders up out of his quarterback spot to kind of throw the rug underneath. That takes some courage. Sanders being recruited. He's a great running back, but really defensive back at the next level. I know Iowa would love to have him. Broke his foot this season on a defensive play, came in on a blitz, tripped over his own man, who was out for six weeks with a busted left foot. It's going to be Cameron again, his second carry. He's getting big, chucks a yard into the 35 yard line, another gain of eight. One of the things the offensive line does so well for Central Bucks West is they move the line of scrimmage before the runner gets there. And you're going to see it again when we see the replay. By the time the runner gets to the line of scrimmage, it's advanced three yards already. So we'll see that as we progress through the evening here with Central Bucks West and with Erie Cathedral Prep, too. That's good. That's a good point, Gary. And the, and the runners do take that wide swath to let the linemen sustain their blocks and push the line of scrimmage backwards. 
Well, for shot, he'll be the uh, lone setback. Mike Oriel, he's a junior quarterback. Very resourceful. Mr. Shoddy burrowing, powering. Close to a first down, he might be stopped a bit short. Nothing fancy about what Central Bucks West does to you. They keep, and look how tight the formation is. It makes it very hard to see where the handoffs are. And as they're coming on you, I mean, they really put the blockers up front. They block as well as any team you'll ever see. When a team needs a yard, that's a very uh, tough formation to stop. Yep. Uh, you know, you got two two backs right off the slot back and the tailback, uh, yard off the line of scrimmage, and you got a guy like Prashadi carrying the ball after that. And it's, uh, it's very difficult to stop if you only need short yard situation. Let's sit there, hold the ball. So it's a first down carry for Pashati. By the way, there's an interesting note on him. He had an 84-yard run for a touchdown last year against Newcastle. That was the longest run from scrimmage until earlier today. We'll talk about that here momentarily. 9.58 left. Very confusing start to this game, and West now wants timeout. Mike Petton. Not happy with what he is seeing down there a little bit. Oh, you mentioned the longest touchdown run. Yeah, about three hours ago or so, Jesse Jones from Tyrone took off on a 92-yard romp towards the end of the game, which sealed Tyrone's double-A championship over Mount Carmel earlier today at the Hershey Park Stadium. You mentioned Mike Pettin, the only coach that Central Bucks West has ever had in the history of the school. A record of 325, 42, and 4. In the 1990s, Central Bucks West has a record of 120 and 8. Eight losses this decade. Well, Mike Pettin going for a 16th undefeated season tonight. That is astounding to me. I'd say that's fairly successful. And a lot of talk about Coach Pettin maybe stepping down and a lot of people believe he's uh, going to stick around for a while, which is only good news for football in this state. He says everybody treats his team like it's their Super Bowl. They take everybody's best shot week in, week out. And they still have a zero on their record in the loss column at this time of year. Ball at the prep 33. Here's Pashati. Gets to the inside. Ball is out. Ball is down. Who's got it? I think Erie Prep has got the first turnover of the night, and they do. Well, what we tell you in the pregame about the tendency of Central Bucks West to put the ball on the floor. There we see a promising drive snuffed out by a CB West turnover. They've been weathering this storm all year long. Now, Pashati got hit in the hand a few weeks ago. It was right it's here. the one carrying the ball, and that's where they went to it. Right here, you see it. Getting that helmet in there, knocking the ball loose. DeMond Sanders knocked it out yep. of there. Great defensive play by DeMond Sanders. Put his hat right on the ball, the out it came. Here he jumps on it, big turnover. Well, a team of West gaudy statistics was only a plus one giveaway takeaway. We'll meet the Erie offense momentarily. There's Sanders flying into the stack, nothing doing. Let's meet Erie on offense. Eric Carlson is their quarterback, Mark. 5'11", there are many who say he's about 6'2", 6'3", that he would be at the top of the food chain as far as the next level. Yeah, there you see There are the linemen for you. These guys do all the work up front. Kaczynski is a hammer. Kujawa's had a great year at the Thomas center spot. One. There's Carlson, 1,600 yards, a great touchdown to interception ratio, 21 to 6. Lustig and Mays know how to get it done at the wide receiver spot. And Walker, 22 touchdowns on the ground as we have a penalty flag on the field. Both teams just a tad out of whack early. We have 9-12 in the opening quarter. The officiating crew talking things over. I think this one's going to go against the Bucs. Go down to Donna Woodard. Dead ball. And coach, but against the defense, still second down. And the defense. Shotty will go over and play defensive end. Watch Brian Callahan. Ryan Blumgren, his brother Travis, a quarterback and defensive back here a few years ago. DiGiacomo playing hurt. Cameron playing with shin splints over the last five weeks. He didn't look slow at all, though, in their first series offensively. More flags. What's up here? Back him up five. Back him up five. Now they're going five the other way. Dead ball. Here we go, substitution. That's the offense. Still second down. Officials are all over that illegal substitution. They're trying to keep an eye on things along those lines. So a few of those earlier today in the Mount Carmel Tyrone game. 
You'd find this strange, Jeb, but one of the early things you have to look for here, the jitters of wanting to play too quickly, too fast, and even some coaches sometimes getting used to things over there on the sideline as far as getting people in and out of the game. Carlson steps under center. Lustig in motion. They're handed off to Sanders. Not much doing there at all. Let's get a great thrust. Popping through there for uh, the Bucks. Rob Bowser, 6'2", 250. Sanders just lost his balance here. Watch him put his right foot forward right here and just slip out. Banged into his own man. Coming right in there behind uh, number 13. That was Josh Lustig. Brian Callahan also helped blow that play up. Third and six for Erie Prep here. Ball up the 33. Carlson's first pass of the night. And he's under heavy pressure. Down he goes. Ball is down. And Central Bucks West covers at the 28-yard line. Back-to-back -back turnovers, forcing it out. Matt Showalter for Central Bucks West on the sack. And we'll see who gets the recovery. Brian Callahan gets the recovery, number 84. Watch this. Carrying it. I just lost control. you got to put that thing away. And there's Callahan diving on top of it. That's a huge turnover. You'll see Callahan diving straight in here to get it. What a play by Showalter. It jiggled that arm, and out came the ball. Like an ornament falling off the tree. Cameron, he's run well early. Leather to leather with Lustig at the 24-yard line. Good block by Jeff Miski on the left side to open him up that time. Still scoreless here in this opening quarter, as you see the Erie Prep defense. They look like the University of Tennessee with that bright orange and the P on the helmet. That's Josh Lustig, 5'9", 155-pound junior in the defensive secondary of Erie Prep. Seems to be some confusion as to who they want in or out of the football game. Some of the coaches on the sideline looking up to the uh, coach's box. It'll be Pashati pounding in and they crawl all over him there. Charles Rush, Joe Dupree, number 40, middle linebacker. Joe Moore is an assistant for Erie Prep. And there you see Pashati straight up the gut, physical runner on the inside. But Joe Moore is a guy that was at Notre Dame and has uh, been back at uh, Erie Cathedral Prep for the last couple of years, taught Dupree really all the intricacies of how to play middle linebacker. And he is a uh, great prospect already hearing from Notre Dame, Penn State, Pitt, and the like. He's one of the top players in this state next year. They're going to need him to make some plays tonight to minimize the damage. Third and six now for West. They are so disciplined the way they get into their stance. Oriole on a keeper. This is wide open. Oriole to the 15, head down at a first down. They're knocking on the door at the Erie Prep 12-yard line. Well-designed play. Technically flawless on the offensive side. And I think Pashadi's hurt on the 22-yard line. Pashadi is hurt. There's Mike Oriole. I'll tell you, he's a great heads-up quarterback. He's, he's very smart. He's got a, in fact, probably his best asset is his head. He's a very smart quarterback. And uh, he's got some uh, good pedigree. His, his father was a quarterback. His two brothers were quarterbacks. One was uh, uh, sent to the uh, University of Kentucky, where he uh, got a full ride as a quarterback. However, had a knee injury, and that ended his career. His other one was uh, other brother, Jeff, went to Rowan University, and uh, he suffered a fairly serious knee injury, unfortunately, too. So, uh, but the uh, the Orioles have a good quarterback pedigree and and what these brothers and their dad do when Mike comes home from the games they look at the tapes and they criticize him and he says it's like sitting in your living room with three Mike Pettens <laughs> my brothers and my dad are sitting there tearing apart the tapes and giving me constructive criticisms after the game it looks like they're looking at the outside of the right ankle of Pashati as they're working it right there and looking for range of motion they're looking right in here I don't know if we go back and get see how he how he did it. If he just it was, turned it or stepped on another player's foot. I'm not certain. It was away from the ball, as you saw. The Pashadi went right on a decoy and uh, came up lame right away. And there he's sitting up now, anyway. But they, you're, he's just kind of making sure that uh, everything's okay. They didn't turn that. You talk about concern. Now he's hey, he's Mike one strong. coming out now to the. That's him with a uh, Bucks jacket on there. 
He obviously wants to find out how the franchise is doing. He's one strong dude. He's a, he's a tremendous physical specimen. He bench presses 385 pounds. He runs a 4-5-40, and he's got a 38-inch vertical leap. What can he do? And he's 6'3 and 245 pounds. They're going to have to help him off. This is uh, not what you want to see in a championship really game. You want to see everybody's best player. I mean, I've spent the better part of it. <laughs> A week looking forward to seeing this guy play, Mark. You know, he, can, he cannot you know. put any weight no, this, on that uh, right angle. This is a uh, this is a significant storyline in this game right here. Mark it down at 6:41 of the first quarter, and uh, boy, they'll be looking at that. Last year, 236 yards, five touchdowns, including an 84-yarder. He has uh, been just. Yeah, outstanding again this year. Again, the state player of the year, the, the leading candidate for state player of the year. So, Shotty will take a seat on the bench. Andy Schmidt is in the game as his replacement for now. Check that. That's going to be Andrew Elson. Bambert is going to see a lot more carries. Flies inside the 10 down to about the 8 yard line. Well, one player doesn't make a great system. Central Bucks West obviously has talent in other areas. This guy, though, is going to have to get a lot more carries now. What opened that up was the block by Ryan Blomgren that time as he opened it up and quickly through the hole went Dave Cameron, a guy who also has some physical problems. But again, as you mentioned earlier, Jed does not seem to be bothering him so far with those shin splints. Shotty now over on the table, by the way, behind the West bench. Second and five, the ball at the nine yard line. It's off the Carlson fumble. Coming with it, Cambert. Make that Blumgren for the touchdown. Enough, they say he's out at the one yard line. Blumgren, who just threw the great block a moment ago, this time goes on the sweep to the near side and almost takes it in. Right to the one inch line here. Look at the blocking. Just you see just white jerseys going down the whole way along. And finally, right down at the one yard line goes Ryan Blumgren, a 6'1, 195 pound senior. Well, they're knocking right on the door. This might be Mike Oriel just on a quick quarterback sneak. He's got a great center at Showalter. He's the only member of the line under 200 pounds, as Mark talked about. They'll hand it off. Cameron, touchdown. Central Bucks West is on the board. Make that Blumgren on the score. Six to nothing. Bucks. Early. Blumgren straight ahead. It looked like he had gotten over the play before. This time, no doubt about it, as he puts the body in the end zone and Central Bucks West. Well, the faces may change, but the system stays the same, and they're on the board six nothing at 5:33 of the first quarter. For the conversion is Tumulty. 5.33 to go in this opening half. Tumulty's kick is up and it is good. So we get a timeout on the field with 5.33 left to go in this opening quarter. It's 7 0. Central Bucks West on this play from Ryan Blumgren from the one yard line. Nothing fancy. You saw John Bear just laying out a block in front. Blumgren got right in behind him and dove into the end zone. A reminder that all of this great 1999 state football championship action is being televised statewide on the Pennsylvania Cable Network, available to millions of state residents and fans of high school championship sports. Jed Donahue, the coach, Gary Sutton, also Mark Shuey, and our entire uh, WITF production crew bringing you the uh, sounds and pictures of the championship weekend 1999. Six play, 27-yard drive, set up on the fumble by Carlson. Showalter knocked the ball free and 7-0 Central Bucks West, but a painful touchdown drive because Dustin Pichotti, the leading player for Central Bucks West, apparent ankle injury, which they are currently working on, over behind the Central Bucks West bench. And he was helped off the field, so we're not sure exactly what his status is right now. But as soon as we can find out, we will let you know. You know, the one thing it would seem this early in the game for Erie Cathedral prep, Mark, that's so important, 
make sure you don't allow them to get into an offensive rhythm, no matter who's in there. And that's exactly what they were able to do after the fumble recovery. That's exactly right. Uh, what Coach Mike Mishler wants to do right now for Erie Cathedral Prep is just get his offense on the field, pick up a couple of first downs, uh, uh, get you know, like you said, get some offensive rhythm right now, and uh, get, get a get a feel for this ball game offensively. And Henkel, he can really fly. One man to beat has the corner. 30, 35, step around, moving all the way up to the 43-yard line. Ed Hinkle is an electrifying talent. That's a 28-yard return, and Erie Prep with good field position with 5.23 left here in the opening quarter. Down now, 7-0. Took one back the whole way last week against Woodland Hills. He's done that. He is a very dangerous punt returner and kick returner. You can see why. He has the ability to shake tackles. Great field vision. Look at him looking upfield. Finds his lane. Cuts inside. Picks up additional yardage before he's finally brought down. Incomplete on the pass. Hinkle covered over there very well. Ted Kenyon, there's Dustin Pashati, and there's what they're working on. They're retaping. He's got pretty good motion there. He'll be this coming back in. Looks like he will be returning. Yep. And they're getting that thing taped up in a hurry right now, so I think you're going to see Pashati coming back to the game probably next series. Which would be tremendous news for Central Bucks West. This is Demond Sanders. He's a handful to midfield. Gain of six. I mentioned Sanders had to miss six games this year with a broken foot mark, but boy, is he coffee quick. Look at him hit the hole. Yes, he is. Yeah, look at this. Nice hole opened up and uh, takes a pop, but he keeps on going. Good instincts from Sanders. One of the things about Sanders that makes him such a tough runner, too, he's only 5'9", and he runs low, so he's a very tough target to find, and when you finally do get him, he's a little bit tough to tackle as well. Yeah, that's right. One of those guys you really don't get a good shot on because he's a very shifty runner. Good footwork. Third and four for Erie Prep. Right at midfield. A run Sanders. Not much room to breathe. He's close to the first down. Tackle for West, Brian Callahan. This is right on the stick. That's going to be tight. It's going to be about a yard shy. Mike Mishler, I think, might end up going for it here. Oh, boy. That's about the length of the football shy, it looks to me, from here. You feel like you got to answer right now if you're Erie Cathedral Prep, even though you're I, I down agree seven with this nothing. Move. Yeah. I mean, this field's playing long because of the wind. It, 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 not as long in this game as the others we've mentioned, but why not? They have a late substitution. Yeah, into the watch game. that. I don't know if he's been the 15 yard. They got Carlson first down. He got it up. Boy, he barely just got in. Yeah. Jed, that's a solid call. You cannot allow Central Bucks West to keep putting their offense on the field and beating you up as we see Carlson get the first down on the quarterback sneak. But the worst thing that could happen is let them get on the field, eat up time, and put you down a couple of scores. Well, that was a nice safe call. They ran right behind Craig Kujawa, their 6'195 pound senior center, and got the job done. First and 10, the ball at the CB West 45 yard line. Gary Prop trying to answer. First trip for them to the state final since 91. Carlson back. And Showwater's got a handful of them at the 49. It's a loss of four, but Carlson probably getting real tired of seeing number 50 for Central Bucks West crawl right through his front door. You see the pocket set up, and then Showwater just comes straight in. Here's the pocket. Take a look right here. Stop right there. Here's the pocket right in here that he's looking at. Showwater disrupts it coming in from the far side, and you'll see what happens. Bang. Just blew right through Demon Sanders there for the sack. That's a second one of the football game. San Sanders has to set that block up about two yards in front of his quarterback to give him more of a pocket. We'll get underneath and send him airborne. Easier said than done, right? This is going to be Jawan Walker. He's loose. Big yardage still alive to the West 25-yard line. Gain of 24. Jawan Walker filled in so marvelously well for the injured Amon Sanders earlier this year. He's over 1,300 yards on the season, and here's why. A little bit of a delayed handoff there, and it really caught the charging Central Bucks West defense off guard as Walker broke loose into the open field, and all of a sudden, new life now for Erie Cathedral Prep at the 25. Led by big 265-pound tackle Charles Rush. Walker again. And this time gets caught in the wash at the 24-yard line. Walker over 1,400 yards now for the season, rushing the football. Came in averaging 8.1 yards a carry. He's got gaudy numbers. 23 touchdowns. 
Here's what you get to do if you're a running back. <laughs> Have a lot of people that you make friends with every play. How explosive is Erie? They've got five or six games here, Mark, where they're over 50 points. They hung a 70 spot on Shemley during the PAA playoffs. They've, and their defense has only given up 82 points all year. Carlson, quick drop, quick throw over the middle, almost intercepted by Ted Kenyon. Kenyon did a nice job of sticking right in there at his defensive back spot and waiting, never really left, saw the play materialize right off the stop. Yeah, that was good instincts by Kenyon. He saw the route the receiver was running, stepped in front, had a good shot at picking off that pass. 157 to go here. There's your time on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. As Erie prep on a long march, about to embark on their ninth play of this drive, third and nine at the CB West 24-yard line. Carlson under center. Quick handoff, Sanders, nothing doing. Just hit immediately. And in on the stop is Rob Bowser, the senior, 6'2", 250. Take a look. Tough running there against the CB West defense. Quick shoot right there for Sanders and then taken down immediately. One of the things here you can see earlier is we see a timeout call to the official on the field, Jed. You're looking at a front line of CB West that goes 6'3", 6'2", 6'4", 6'2", and you're looking at a quarterback that's only 5'11", and it seems like he's having a little bit of a problem seeing over that front line and getting a clear look at his receivers when he does pass. You okay? Ball at the 24-yard uh, line, minute 35 left in this opening quarter. That's a big play, fourth down and eight. There's no question you go here. Got some big play wideouts. Carlson back. Carlson looks into the end zone. Intercepted. Kenyon to take it back for the touchdown. An wow. incredible play. I don't believe what I just saw. Ed Hinkle took it away, and it's a touchdown. In the corner of the end zone. Kenyon had it. Hinkle took it back. Look at this. You talk about your 50-50 ball. Beautiful pass. Laid it out there. Being played the whole way down there. Nicely by Kenyon, and then Hinkle just grabs it and steals it and says, give me that thing. Touchdown. Wow. That's an amazing play right there. That's as wacky as you'll see. Ed Hinkle. <laughs> That's a sixth touchdown of the year by reception. One-on-one -on -one coverage back there in the defensive backfield. Came with a blitz. Can't be, can't be too upset as a defensive coach with Kenyon. He had it played the whole way. No. He was watching it, picked it off, and just had it taken out of his hands. Ball started against you know, the offense. Repeat the try. Sometimes the other guy just makes the play, and that time Ed Hinkle just made the great play, and that gave Erie Prep the touchdown. Seven to six to score. Erie Prep trying to tie it up. The extra point will be five yards longer here on the legal procedure, and this will be a very yard. important. Extra point for Jason Dolick. The kick is up, and it is good. 116 to go. A lightning bolt here in Quad A. Ed Hinkle, who stole the football away, a 10-play, 56-yard drive. It takes four minutes and 17 seconds. And that was on fourth down, the Hinkle touchdown catch. That's the second time they converted fourth down in that particular drive, and they did it for the touchdown. Well, it paid off twice for them, and 7-7 uh, seven, seven on the board with 1.16 to go in the first quarter. We got ourselves a football game. That was one of the most unusual plays I've seen at <laughs> high school <laughs> level. He's been kind of speechless since. <laughs> well, he actually he had looked, the pickoff. He did. He had the pickoff. I thought it was intercepted. I was calling interception, then Hinkle just took it right back from him. And you had it right. He had it intercepted, all of a sudden, give me that thing. Great, great. football instincts. You know, gee, Hinkle just made a uh, flat-out great play. There's Mike Patton. Great work, too, from our uh, WITF production crew. To get, they had all the angles for you there. That'll be a part of our uh, halftime package of highlights. You know, these guys and gals have been doing the games from WITF since 1993 in all kinds of weather, all kinds of conditions, and they have been able to provide you, the public, with some of the most riveting pictures that really, truly capture the essence of what's going on here at the IAA Championships. Short kickoff this time, Blumgren. 
Lundgren's got some wheels, though, and he flies to about the 38-yard line. Pashadi will not be in the lineup here. And I'm not sure when we'll see him. He's still sitting over on the uh, CB West bench. Head bow, we might add. Not looking like he's too happy at the moment. We've got ice himself. over there on that. They are working, doing everything they can to try and... But I saw him walking here behind the bench, and he's doing it gingerly. We've got a camera over there. We'll show it to you momentarily after the play. First and 10 for West here at their own 37-yard line. So Oriole's going to throw for the first time. Got a man right out, in, out of the hands of Andrew Elsing. Elsing, a hero a week ago, he set up the block that got Cameron free for the winning the go ahead score on the punt return. There, you there see. he is. And that is wrapped pretty tight. Yeah. That boots no off. Yep. No shoe on it. He's uh, not coming back, at least for now. <clears throat> That's a wait and see at this point. <laughs> we'll see if we can go back to that play. I don't know. Probably by halftime, we'll see if we can find it seeking exactly what happened to him. But, I mean, he just went down, there was no doubt. Yeah, and it was well away from the ball. It was very strange. Yeah, so disciplined up front, especially this time of year. Orioles got a man that can't hang on again. Another drop. That's Dave. Camburn that time. Yeah, Camburn really trying to go before he ever had it there. I want I want you to come in. Yeah, and you know, quarterback Mike Oriole, he's not really gunning these things in there. I mean, he's putting a nice touch onto it. Hitting him in the hands. Just one of those nights for some of these receivers, I guess, for CB West. But uh, nice touch on the ball by Oriole. Third and ten for Central Box West. Minute and one second remain in this first quarter of play. It's been great having you all weekend long, Pennsylvania, on the Pennsylvania Cable Network Championship at Quad A. 7-7 our score. Cameron going to motion here. Oriole back to throw. He'll run, too, if he can. Krebs got pretty good surge, and Sanders cuts the rug at the 38-yard line. That's why he's being looked at as a big-time player. Eric Field was over there, but DeMond Sanders, this is quality cornerback play here. Yeah. Watch the fill here the whole way across. Just take the play, string it out, string it out, string it out. And you finally just run him out of bounds and, and just outstanding pursuit laterally that time by Erie Cathedral Preps oh, yeah. defense. And led by Eric Field, you mentioned the number 33, the linebacker. He filled that one hole that uh, Oriole was going to take it up in. The Mons 5-9, but packs a wallop. So CB West will punt. They almost got at that field. Had his hands up, and it'll go to the 40-yard line. Great field position for Erie Prep. That was a 20 two-yard punt. There's your time remaining in this first quarter. Well, Erie Prep, they come here with a lot to prove, Mark. You mentioned about their schedule. It's about respect. Win here tonight against Central Bucks West. I don't think that's a problem no. anymore. You know, yeah, you can say whatever you want about the schedule, but I mean, there's a lot of talent on Erie Cathedral Prep's team. A lot of a lot of guys looking at Division I scholarships. Charles Rush, the 265-pound uh, junior, he attended Penn State's uh, Michigan game in Happy Valley on an unofficial visit. He went to their summer camp. Dale Williams, junior lineman, junior linebacker Joe Debris, they're looking at Pitt. Sanders, big hole, just did get tripped up. And had he not been tripped up by Blumgren, he's gone. He got positive yardage, five yards, but I mean, a toe tapper, and otherwise he's history. One shoot top away right there, and you saw Blumgren hanging on to it for dear life. That's the end of the first quarter of play. Very entertaining first quarter. One filled with some very interesting storylines. Two turnovers, one led to a score for Central Bucks West. And Dustin Pashadi out of the football game. The uh, All-State fullback, running back for the Bucks with an ankle injury. Hurt still sitting. Hurt in the second series for CB West. And there he is, as good a player as you're going to find in this state. He's one of the greatest players in their story tradition at Central Bucks West. First quarter statistics, Mark. Why don't you read some of those for me there? As far as the numbers are concerned, it's about as even as the score at 7-7. Well, Central Bucks West, nothing through the air, 56 yards rushing. One turnover, and it was a biggie. Erie Prep, they spread it around. Very good balanced offense. 40 yards rushing, 24 yards passing for a total of 66, and one turnover for Erie. 
One of the things the trainer's uh, talking about the, uh, is here's, here's the play on Pashadi right okay. here. Let's see if we can find it. He's in the upper right. He's 33 right there. And that's Charles Rush that's Get him ready. in and around. Oh. That's where it happened. They went for him. That was a great fake. That's the deception of the West offense. Rush went after Pashadi, and there's his ankle gave way. Kind of Jawan slid underneath Pashadi and turned the ankle. Yeah. If we can come back to the picture of Pashadi there behind the bench, and I don't know if we can, the yeah, trainer's talking to Pashadi over there, and I think what they're trying to talk about is would it feel better if you put a heel lock on it? One of the things that a lot of times they'll try to do to give it a little stability is take the tape from the back of the heel down to the bottom, and you'll see if we can see the ankle here. If you can imagine taking and bringing it up like this. That's what he was talking to him about a moment ago. What we call a heel lock, and it comes up underneath there to try to give a little stability to the ankle. Carlson, as we go back to live action, has Josh Lustig, and he's got a first down as they get a gain there of about 11 yards. Lustig's the big play guy on this offense, averaging 27 yards a catch. There's the student body at Erie Prep. They left no doubt as to what they thought of Central Bucks West Market about four o'clock this afternoon. They were all yelling us and yelling in unison, overrated. They've been standing up in the stands there like that since about four o'clock this afternoon. That's to be determined. Carlson, he's got a real good arm for Lustig, a little bit too strong and incomplete. Camburn step for step. But Carlson gives you an idea just how vertical he can go. That was a pretty good looking throw. And earlier today, you couldn't throw from this direction where area is going. You couldn't throw at this end zone. Oh, no. I heard some of the interviews with the uh, the Tyrone and the Mount Carmel uh, kids after the ball game. A very thrilling double-A final. Anyway, each to, to a man, each and every one of them said that the wind was such a factor that it affected each and every play that they called today. And when all the fans started getting here early, it was... Again, a big factor. Huge crowd from Central Bucks West. A lot of people from areas where Carlson well, play action. He's back under the gun. Throws on the move, has a man, and I believe that is going to be Ed Hinkle at the 39-yard line. Ed Hinkle already the hero tonight for Erie Cathedral Prep, but watch Carlson here. You know, Carlson does a great job of coming back, keeping the poise, and then turning and making sure he hits his man with a good down and out pattern. He was actually looking for DeMond Sanders on the other side of the field, saw he was covered. Had a blitz coming in and had time to find Hinkle on the far sideline. Excellent play by the quarterback, Eric Carls. Game tied at seven with 10.40 and counting to go in the second quarter of play. And Harry Prep playing pretty well. Good looking quad A game right now. Carlson on a keeper. And oh, there's that Mike Showalter again. He's been living on it. And another big loss. That's not Showalter. That's Andrew Elsing. And frankly, that was a busted play because Carlson turned around and looked for a back, and there was none. He said, whoops, got to take off of my own. <laughs> that was a pretty good surge right there, and it'll be fourth down. And let's go about seven or eight at this point. Looking at the young man who just made that fine play, linebacker Andrew Elsing. Hinkle back at his own 39. Low shot. Neary will cover at the 22-yard line, and that's where the Central Fox West offense will go back. You know, if you're a fan of the 4A game tonight, you can see a lot of Central Bucks West fans sitting there, not too happy at the moment, knowing Dustin Fashadi sitting on the sideline and not able to get in the game as we see Mike Patton talking to his young quarterback there. Uh, Mark Oriel, but uh, you know everybody here tonight. That's all that was on the lips when you walked around the stadium before the game today was Pashadi, and here he is now out of the game. And again, we have word that they're going to try and bring him back after halftime. They're going to try and get through the second quarter and things. It's tied at seven. And off, I believe this is Cameron, and he's got maybe a yard. That's at Charles Rush, Joe Dupree, and on the stop. See it here, diving over the tackle, and just things were botched up from the beginning on that. Nowhere to go. At Joe Dupree, number 40, really has no foot nose for the football, doesn't he? Out of the linebacker spot, he really finds the ball carrier in a hurry. 6'5", 230. There he is right there. Already looking at Pitt. His dad played at the Grand Kersey at the University of Kentucky. Big hole, Amber. First down hole all the way to the 
the 36 yard line. Hinkle and Sanders combine on the stop. I don't know how Charles Rush ended up over there, but that gives you an idea of his speed for Erie Cathedral Prep. He's a down lineman. He's around the play. You see the blocking right here. Good lead block that time by number 68. That was Rob Bowser to open up the wing. That's a great pair of DBs. There's their whole secondary is really good. There's Robbie Bowser right there. 62250. I'd like to run behind him myself. And they do. Regularly. Kenyon into the game. Oh, yeah, still keeping the ball. Now throwing on the run. Got a man, and it's caught for a first down. Andrew Elsing, who just had a quarterback sack, doing his part on offense now to the 49-yard line. That's positive yardage. So important to be able to square your shoulders. Take a look right here and stop. And we'll see the young man squaring up his shoulders right there to throw the football. Once he does that, throwing it downfield and finding his man. 14 yards and all to the 49-yard line. You got a timeout on the field at this point with 9-0-3. Mike Mishler may want to talk things over for Erie Cathedral Prep on that last play. Erie Cathedral Prep dodged a bullet. Ted Kenyon was wide open down the middle of the field. He went on a straight fly. Nobody picked him up. Obvious defensive breakdown on the part of uh, Cathedral Prep, and uh, maybe Mishler wants to kind of plug that hole right now. The thing you have to be aware of when you play Central Bucks West is having your defense have to sit in that field too long and they make the clock their friend. And right now, Central Bucks West appears to be trying to do that, although they're passing the ball more probably than they would normally with Pashadi in there. That's exactly right. And that's, uh, that's some of the, the technique that Mike Patton uses when uh, when teams are keying on Pashadi. He throws the ball more, uses more misdirection, gets more people into the games. And that's what we're seeing tonight here okay. from Central Bucks West, using a lot of personnel, throwing the ball around, some misdirection. Seven Let's first down so Let's far go. for Central Bucks West, but they've only been in two third down situations, which tells you they're taking big hunts of yardage on first and second down. That's important. 9 0 3 left. It's been great having you all weekend long here on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. It's state history in the making, the 1999 PAA State Football Championships, televised live across the Commonwealth for a second straight year on PCN, the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Ball right at midfield, first and ten. Oriole. Junior quarterback has come such a long way. Handoff for West. This is Phil DiGiacomo, who's been playing hurt a little bit. I think he's got a variety of miseries, such as a hip pointer and the like. Watch the double team block here. You've got Colahan, and you've also got Blomgren that really opened up that particular run. Central Bucks West, they're a gritty bunch. Last week against Bethlehem Catholic, they trailed 14 to seven with six minutes remaining. Rallied to score three touchdowns and win that ball game and advance to the finals here in Hershey. Motion man is Andy Schmidt. Oreo gonna pitch this time. Gonna be Cameron, nothing doing that time. I think that's Charles Rush in there. I'll double check to make sure who's around. Nope, that's gonna be uh, Jason Easter in on the stop. Junior, 5-7. You mentioned about this team being behind twice last week as we see the run here again for number 41, Cambrum. They hadn't been behind for 13 straight games until last week, so you get an idea that they're used to being front runners, and you get them out in front, they're pretty tough to catch up. And you know what Coach Mike Patton, he's been around 33 years, you know what he does to motivate his teams? He uses uses some uh, some, some neat stuff. He said before the North Penn game, he goes, let, let me explain to you what would happen if you lose this ball game. I'll continue the thought after the play. Third and five at the 46-yard line. Oriole going to throw. He's got a man. It's to Giacomo, and he dropped it incomplete. It'll be fourth down, and they're going to have to punt on fourth and five. Yeah, head coach Mike Patton uses some neat motivational techniques. Prior to the North Penn game, a very, very tough rival uh, in District 1, Mike Patton told his team, you know what? Let me explain to you what you're going to have to go through if you lose this game. The fans are going to rip down the goalposts. You're going to have to sit there and be sportsmen and go over and shake their hands. Now, if you want to avoid all that, there's only one thing you can do. Win the football game. <laughs> of course, it didn't hurt either that the younger Patton was coaching North Penn team. Mike Patton Jr. has got a heck of a program. Look, Cameron really laid that up there. Henkel fair catches at about the 13-yard line. So trading in, in a chess match a little bit. Gary, when you lose a star player, much like what's happened 
with Central Bucks West. As a coach, what are you doing? Because this has to be deflating someone. Well, there's two things that happen. Number one, for the defense of Erie Cathedral Prep, they've got to look at some new numbers that they were not planning on focusing on to start the game. But on the other side, you've got to find the character of your team. Do they have the ability to step up? And can you find someone that can carry the load at this moment? And one of the nice things about the Central Bucks West program is they have the same thing going on all the time. You can fit a new piece of the, into the puzzle. There's one weakness in the West defense. It might be the secondary. They're going to stay on the ground. Sanders coming right through. Angelo Barillo, a junior, 6'3", 235, and on the stop. You know, Gary, you brought up a good point. The, the, the powerful football programs throughout the state, you know, the players, they're, they're almost like a shark's tooth. You know, there's one right behind you to replace you when you either graduate or go down with an injury. And uh, Central Bucks West is the same situation. Now, Dustin Pashadi is up on his feet for the first time since the injury. He's kind of gingerly walking along the sidelines. There you see him. He's, he's vertical, and that's, that's a good sign. Well, the problem you have also is Pashadi's got a lot of games to play yet in his career before it's all said and done, and you don't want to take a chance on any permanent damage. No coach would do that. Carlson back, looks, throws, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Jake Lynch. Easy, gentlemen, way to go. Nice coverage by James West that time as you see him standing in the middle of your picture. Third and eight. Not to be confused with the wild, wild. <laughs> Right now, third down and eight. We've got a whistle and an official's timeout. Or, yep, officials talk things over here. I think that secondary must have heard you a few minutes ago, Okay, Jack. I got Pretty a sideline warning. West. Get him back. Got a sideline warning. Back him up. Just a sideline warning back about. Next, the next one, Coach. <laughs> three in a box. We got more than three in a box. Get the players back. Get everybody else back. Next one. Okay. There's not even a clearly defined box. Coach, coach. There's not even a clearly defined box. Players back there. Get them back there. Here you go, John. Okay. You guys got to get back. Hey, coach, Brian, coach. Two down two. Two. No, back to the after. Coach, next one's, five, next one's a five yard penalty. Okay. <laughs> got a sideline warning against Central Bucks. <laughs> well, that's the game within a game right there. <laughs> Coaches. That's a Turn neat down. peek uh, at aspect of football you really don't get. Yeah. You don't miss anything down there, do you, Gary? Well, you don't. And, and you it's try not to, anyway. And, and the officials want to make sure they've got control. They're being evaluated during the game as well. Carlson back, looks. Got a man, and it's caught. Nope, they say he was out of bounds. The official was right there. He had a perfect look at it. Well, you talk Josh about, Lustig. Talk about a great throw, though. My goodness, it was a real tough throw, too. This is a 45-yard throw. Watch this. Good setup. Steps into it. Let's see. We'll freeze it right here when it comes up. Does he have it? No. Does not have control at that point because he hits the ground. I'll tell you, it was pretty close, though. And they almost got the ball. And... Cameron, who returned one a week ago, flies upfield to about the 39-yard line. So Central Bucks West will start at the Erie Prep. 39 with 616 left in this second quarter of play. Teams are trading punches a little bit. Kind of the middle rounds of a title fight. Well, right now it's a game of field position, and, and you really don't want to do anything that's not playing too close to the chest right now. Pashadi continuing to walk around down here on the far side and looks a little bit better each time. Trying to warm it up a little bit. Blumgren on the carry, not much there. Yard or two, that's it. Joe Dupree in on the stop. I think he's shaking up a little bit. You take a look. A straight hand off and, and nothing in front of him except there. Yeah, Dupree's all right. Just, <laughs> Dupree was untouched, was unblocked. Just the shock of the tackle there. Shock on shock. Pad on pad at the 37-yard line. Oriel on a keeper, flag flies. Ball is out, and it goes out of bounds. 60, you're tackling a guy. And it's a hold. 60's tackling It's going to be a number 60 here, and we're looking Nick down. Nick Daly. And that's Nick Daly. He was actually tackled, holding on to the, the guy coming around. It's going to be holding. More 10 from here. We'll see it again if we uh, get a replay here. So to go back from the uh, 40 all the way back up near midfield. Holding. Can't 
Pace the offense. Repeat second down. Okay, take a look. And you couldn't really see it too well right there, but right back there, 60 was actually on the ground and just pulled the guy back down. Yeah, it was up on the upper left-hand side of your screen. Referee spotted it right away. That's one thing this weekend, Jed, you, you, you just have to have your hats off to the referee. The outstanding officiating throughout the weekend, not one close call. They have missed many close calls. They have missed any I've seen. They don't get instant replay. Oriole down in a heap. Charles Rush has him. You're looking at one of the finest defensive linemen of the state of Pennsylvania. He's on everybody's radar screen for the next level. He is a big time war daddy. Just what you're not seeing is him fighting through a lot of blocks right there. He's double teamed actually at the line of scrimmage. There's Daly having a tough time with him once again. Well, and Daly was holding on to the back of his shirt and it still <laughs> didn't help. She felt, uh, you know, fought through two guys to get to the quarterback. <laughs> Charles Rush, what a great name for a lineman, huh? He's a stud, no question about that. Third down and 27 yards. Oriole back, looks, they're gonna throw underneath and there's just nothing there. I'll tell you what, I feel Erie Prep gaining confidence as this game goes on. Jake Lynch on the coverage on the pass to Camburn. And the Prep crowd on their feet. Caught in the work of the defense that time. Fourth down and 27 to go. Take a look right here and stop. Everything being kept oh, in, incomplete. in front of Erie Cathedral Prep. They're letting nothing get behind them. Well, I think Erie's got the speed advantage. I, I thought that was the case maybe coming into this thing. Fourth third down conversion possibility so far for CB West and only one conversion. Camber, pretty good kick. Pinko wanted nothing to do with it. Cardinal Sin, and there it goes. Wobbling toward the end zone, and they... Down it at the one. Oh, man. Doesn't get any better than that now, does it? And yeah. that's why you try and make the catch. Ed Hinkle knows. He's walking slowly off the field, heads down. <laughs> and he's going to have Cardinal sin, right? Yeah, he's going to have to visit over there with Coach Mike Mishler in a second. And that's a Cardinal sin, right, too. That's about two feet from the goal line. Oh, boy. Nicest thing for Hinkle right now is the fact he gets to stay out on offense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This where as a coach, <laughs> the poor guy doesn't want to have to come over there and see you right now. I'll see you later when you calm down a little bit. 41-yard punt to the one-yard line. This will put Erie, and they'll just run a quarterback sneak to buy some room here. George Zurich counting up a lot of the numbers for us all weekend long. We could not do this weekend as wow. without George. He's our MVP at times. There's Carlson. Just nudging forward a couple of yards for some room. Try That's all they little, wanted to do. Yeah, try to get a little bit of breathing room. The immediate goal right now if you're Erie Cathedral Prep, get a first down. That's the biggest thing you could ask for and then build from there. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Wow, Carlson back. Looks, nice yeah, throwing and they didn't really run the right route. Henkel zigged and zagged the wrong way. Pretty good coverage, too, by Ted Kenyon. Smart play as well by Carlson just to throw it away from everybody and make sure that nothing bad was going to happen. 3.56 left. You Got to have confidence in your quarterback to call a play like that from that end of the field to do the right thing, not throw it into coverage, not, uh, not eat it. going to be DeMond Sanders and they're going to have to punt out of their own end zone. There's just no room in there against that wall of Central Bucks West. I mean, this is one of the top defensive and offensive line units just from their technique. It's flawless and it's just tough to move out of there. Well, and Central Block Bucks West now is going to get very, get very good. Yeah, he's field kicking position. into a win. Henkel back there. Yep. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. No problem, Jeff. Field, up and field. 7-7 game, and C.B. West is really going to get good field position. Boy, get away from that football. I'll tell you what, that's playing with a live grenade. That almost rolled up the back again of a couple of Buck players. Buck's players, rather, and here we go, right at the 40. And that was an ugly punt, but it certainly turned out a lot better for Erie Cathedral Prep than they could have imagined. It rolled all the way out to the 40-yard line. They got a nice fortunate bounce. C.B. West, best field position to start a drive sometime. Big story, in case you're just joining us, Dustin Pashotti injured an ankle in CB West, second series, and his status being evaluated, they hope to bring it back in the second half. Camber, 
He's been a bolt of lightning today. He's got it to the 34-yard line. He's their leading ground gainer so far in this opening half. Here's Charles Rush once again. Charles Rush starting to take control here. Came in on the bull rush Won't last the series. the last time you say that. Yeah. <laughs> Recorded a big sack. Quarterback Mike Oriel. You get an idea just how big Rush is when you look over there and look over the line at him compared to the other guy. 6'3", 265, only a junior. He's a young one. Look at that guy. Time out there. There's Charles Rush, number 59 <laughs> in your program. Cameron's run nine times for 55 yards. He's the leading ground gainer for uh, Central Bucks West. Mike Mishler, only 30 years old, but again, he's got Joe Moore on his staff, uh, teaches offensive line play probably as well as anybody in this country. Was at Notre Dame under Lou Holtz. Was there, I think, for one of their national championship years. You know, it's not easy being a head coach of a successful program. Last Friday, a week ago, Mishler and some assistant coaches left their game at Hempfield in Greensburg, drove all night to Harrisburg. Then they left Harrisburg very early Saturday morning, drove to Bethlehem to scout Saturday afternoon's Class uh, Quad A Eastern Final against Bethlehem Catholic and CB West. Mishler and his staff <laughs> arrived back in Erie at Sunday, about 3.15 a.m., handled some media duties Sunday morning, and then it was back at it, preparing for CB West. So that's how he spent his last week. Well, a long drive, no big deal to him, because in college, he's sophomore William and Mary, drove up for the finals in Altoona at Mansion Park. So people don't realize when you're coaching a state championship run, I don't care what sport it's in, you're working, you have tunnel vision, you don't get to enjoy all the things that other people enjoy around that whole run. Yeah, they only see the finished product on game day, Gary. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> Here's Cambert. He's got a hole to the outside and slams to the 30s. Close to a first down. I think he's got that. He's there about the other side of the 30s where he needed to be. Here's one of those situations where we see the line of scrimmage actually move before the runner gets there. As we see Cameron getting the pitch out here on the sweep. Look at the push out there. Miski actually getting taken down by Rush. And then Rush shedding the blocker to go get a good tackle. Great pictures by our WITF team. Ball out just slightly. Slide the ball straight. See, they have to bring him all the way across. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's got it. We'll That's see. And by the nose of a football. First down, Central Bucks West. Go back and look at Rush again if we can in a moment. Here's a guy you can't play one on one right now. This guy is absolutely unstoppable when matched up just with one single person. Look, watch the play again. Look at him. Here he is. Here's Rush right here, 59, moving across the line, just running over Miski and bringing down the ball carrier, Campbell. That's not a powder puff he's playing with either. Miski's a. Turning starter, great player. That's a great blocker. matchup to watch tonight. Miski will get his share. Blumgren, that ball is down, and Blumgren somehow got back and covered up. Now, let's see. I thought Blumgren got on it. Yeah, I believe he does. I believe number four Blumgren does. I don't know. 33 for Erie. That being Aaron Field says he has it. Get away. Get away. Get away. Here the officials. Oh. You had an inadvertent whistle. We're going back to the yeah, end of the run. Blumgren okay. lost it then. But in Blumgren's case, the second We're time is at the, the ground that caused the fumble. Okay. okay That's right. whistle. They say his knee down. It'll be West We ball. have an inadvertent whistle. We're going back and replay it down. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, baby. Huh. Well, our first controversial call of the weekend. But when the whistle blows, there's nothing they can do. Now they're going to go over and explain it to Mike Mishler. And, and this is uh, right, obviously right, not going to be. Okay, we're okay. I He's not a happy let me, dude. Let me explain it to you. Okay, he had an inadvertent whistle, and by rule. Let's okay, uh, by rule, not put that live there, guys, just in case it gets a little tense. 7-7, seven, seven, 12, 12 to go, second quarter. <laughs> Somehow I'd get. <laughs> well, you know. I mean, you know. The, I mean, it's just a natural reaction. Yeah. But the whistle blows. There's nothing you can do about it. That's but right. We got to look over happens. there. Coach Mike Mister listening very carefully, and uh, and doing a nice job over there. And he. Okay. This time they're going to double team Charles Rush. Watch this. Two guys come up. They're going to double team. You saw Miski along with Andrew Elsing that time double teaming rush, but of course the fumble, the main focus of the play. Uh, that's, that's no doubt that was a uh, 
fumble that probably goes Erie Prep's way there. This could be a very huge inadvertent whistle. We'll wait and see at 2.04 here in the second quarter. About two minutes to go in the second quarter. Orioles going to throw it. Got a man. Ball is tipped. Boy, I'll tell you what, Erie Prep just getting big surge on Mike Oriole, the quarterback for Central Box West. Looks like Mike Ward. Second down. Mike Ward coming up very quickly that time out of his defensive lineman spot. And uh, that's Jake Lynch. Was who, uh, Jake Lynch actually got it. And Ward had a shot at getting the interception. Looking for Dave Cameron out there on the flats. He was open. Well, we've seen them run that play for years in the state championship, Mark, and for years, regular season. Because, you know, you, you have to respect the run. This program's based on the run. So when they do play action, it's a handful for you. Now they're going to do a reverse to Cameron. This may Blake op break open. Does a little bit to about the 23-yard line. And who else in on the stop? He's having a heck of a first half. Demond Sanders. Well, they show misdirection and here. Joe Dupree there. Misdirection here to Ryan Blumgren going the other way. And then they come back to Cameron. Now watch. Misdirection. Blumgren dives in line. And now here comes Cameron around the near side and finds a little bit of running room. It's Joe Dupree who runs all the way over. And makes the play. I'll tell you what, Demond Sanders came very close to wrecking that play and possibly Blowing caused a fumble That's in the backfield. Right. Boy, he's had a heck of a half. Oriole flag is down. Might be a motion here. Let's see. And the pass incomplete intended for Ted Kenyon. But somebody jumped for Central Bucks West, I believe. 106 left here in the opening half. Each team with one timeout left. Here it is. Hey, white captain. Ball start, interesting call. It's third and four. I think you or you gotta you gotta take penalty. Because they've got a, a prevailing win to their back. Certainly not as dramatic as we mentioned as last night with Strathaven's win or earlier today with Tyrone's 13 to 7 win against 13-6 uh, win rather against Mount Carmel. Here it is. Illegal formation. Dance the offense. Repeat third down. So now it's third and nine. Tumulty with three field goals this year, number 11 for Central Bucks West. He is the kicker, obviously. But you got a, about, let's say, five to eight more yards of range with this win. He's going to need another eight yards before he really is in, in before range. Before they're in lockdown range. Now you've got a whistle, and we'll just kind of figure out. And we're back to live action. Oriole on the center. Three wide receivers out. Oriole back into the pocket. Under the gun and down he goes. Another sack. Tim Dance. Check that. It's Mike give, Cray. Give credit to Eric Field for turning that play in from the far side. Eric Field coming up hard. A linebacker spot. Take a look right here. Stop. There's Eric Field. He turns it in and now forces it so it can be picked up. Right into rush by Mike Craig and and you know you turn everything inside and who's inside big number 59 Charles Rush he's something he's good at down guys Look I've seen in not only this tournament all year Nick he Daly. is as advertised and Nick Daly has his hands full tonight <laughs> big hug again on Rush Oreo on fourth and 11 throws got a man pass caught and short of the first down is Kenyon and he was hit and dropped by, I believe, Tom Morgan over there. And Jason Easter Easter's coming up to that. Easter yeah. as well. Easter showing you how to fundamentally tackle in the open field correctly. Watch this. Nice step up that time. Good pass. Now watch Easter come up and make the play right here. Easter comes up and says, I'm taking you on. Bang and down. It's a great open field tackle. From Jason Easter, 5'7", 160 pound defensive half. There's Carlson. He's going to throw. There's a man and undershot him. Looking for Hinkle yeah, on Hinkle the cross. Hinkle wide open on a cross. No question. I'm a little surprised right here that Erie Cathedral Prep is throwing the ball with the field position that they have at the moment. But, it, you know, it talks about a winning attitude here in a state championship. 31 seconds left here in this opening half. There you see Jason Easter on the far side, an outstanding open field tackle on defense a moment ago. Yeah, let's see what this is. Maybe another. Uh, I think Hinkle jumped off sides. False start. 
We've had more flags probably in this game than if you add up the other three games for the whole weekend so far. No question. There, yep. there it is. The jump. Oh, it's Charles Rush. <laughs> Left side of the line, Charles Rush. Sorry, there. Charles. We don't mean to be pointing all you guys out on these things. <laughs> the universal right <laughs> hand to the head going, oh, man. <laughs> it's on statewide TV, too. Did I do that? <laughs> we oh. love the game you play. Have no fear. Yeah, he's, he's, he's done enough other good things that that one's going to get absorbed. They're going to just uh, let this calf come to an end. I don't think Mike Pettin has a problem with that. His team's been out of whack since the injury to Pashadi. They've had great, spectacular field position this entire first half and have not cashed in, Mark, <coughs> at all. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, I tell you what, the Erie Prep defense has a lot to say about that as well. Uh, Charles Rush is a real handful there in the middle, and the linebackers are very active. Great coverage from the secondary. Good team effort from Erie. We have come to halftime, and we are right back where we started. Each team with a touchdown in the opening half. We'll have first half stats, first half highlights, interview with PIAA Executive Director Brad Cashman, and of course, the third quarter of this uh, Quad A Championship game back in Hershey in Chocolatetown, USA after this. You're watching live coverage of PIAA Championship football exclusively on PCN, the Pennsylvania Cable Network. The PIAA is a Pennsylvania nonprofit corporation organized on a membership basis. Membership includes most of the public and many private high schools in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The PIAA develops and enforces rules which are authorized by the member schools to regulate interscholastic athletic competition. The PIAA was formed in 1913 by a group of high school principals to establish uniform rules, eliminate abuses, and place interscholastic athletics in the overall context of secondary education. The purposes of the PIAA are defined in Article 2 of its Constitution. They are to organize, develop, and direct an interscholastic athletic program which will promote, protect, and conserve the health and physical welfare of all participants, to formulate and maintain policies that will safeguard the educational values of interscholastic athletics and cultivate the high ideals of good sportsmanship, and to promote uniformity of standards in all interscholastic athletic competition. The PIAA believes that the student-athlete is best served by a system which emphasizes the amateur, educational, and character-building aspects of high school sports, a system which recognizes that athletics is not the driving force, but rather that students are in school primarily to obtain an education. The membership of the PIAA consists of approximately 1,300 schools, divided almost equally between senior high schools and junior high middle schools. Of that membership, approximately 150 are private schools. Nearly 250,000 students participate in interscholastic athletics under the PIAA each year, placing Pennsylvania seventh in the United States for the 1997-98 school year. The four major areas in which the PIAA currently operates are the following. Establishment and enforcement of rules governing the eligibility of high school athletes to participate in interscholastic athletics. These include rules for academic performance, attendance requirements, transfer students, pre-participation physical evaluations, age and amateur status. Organizing and operating 27 post-regular season playoffs and championships in 10 girls sports and 31 post-regular season playoffs and championships in 11 boys sports. Adopting the playing rules for each sport under its jurisdiction, with the exception of bowling, golf, girls lacrosse, rifle, and tennis, all other playing rules adopted by the PIAA are published by the National Federation of State High School Associations, of which the PIAA has been a member since 1925. Registering and training officials to officiate a contest in which the PIAA member schools participate. Nearly 13,000 officials are currently registered with the PIAA. The PIAA's principal source of revenue is the sale of tickets to its playoffs and championships. Gate receipts enable the PIAA to operate without taxpayer financing. The PIAA also provides services to its members on a day-to-day -day basis through its headquarters in Upper Island Township, Cumberland County, near Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. The PIAA assists member schools and families by providing the student-athlete with opportunities for achievement. It would be easy for us simply to work with PCN to offer these telecourses, and that would be it. In other words, a student tunes in, they interact with the instructor, 
they get their transcript, they're done. We believe that a college experience should be much more than this. And so we have developed the full range of services of advising, counseling, the bookstore. Um, we're working on student activities as well. Uh, if students have a problem, whether it's a personal problem, whether it's a problem in the course, we believe that there should be a telephone number that they can call toll free. If they have access to the internet, they can get into our web page and ask one of our counselors, one of our advisors, one of our tutors um, for some additional help. And so we've put additional resources into this area because we're not doing this uh, simply to generate additional revenue. We're doing this truly to help people to be more successful. For more information, contact Montgomery County Community College at 1-888-636-MCCC. Hello, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Cable Network. We're delighted to join with you in celebrating high school athletics in the Commonwealth. Everything that we do here at PCN, from our daily coverage of the General Assembly, to programs exploring manufacturing, from carriage of significant Pennsylvania events, to our satellite distribution across the state, all of this is made possible by Pennsylvania cable television companies, which carry our network on their channel lineup. Often at PCN, we'll list the names and service areas of local cable TV providers. These are the community-minded companies which voluntarily pay a monthly fee to cover network programming and operating costs. PCN receives no state funding. We are supported instead through the generosity of cable systems which make PCN available to their subscribers. In watching high school sports on PCN, we hope you'll remember the commitment of Pennsylvania cable television companies. They're the ones that make this network and today's programming possible. Homework Help on PCN is a live two-hour interactive call-in program for students in grades 1 through 12. State certified teachers will work through math and science questions with students. 5x times 3 gives you 15x. And Jesse, what do you get if you add the 2x and the 15x together? 17x. That's exactly what you want. Homework Help on PCN airs throughout the school year on Sundays, live at 5 p.m. I'm James J. Duratz of the Pennsylvania Cable Network, and I'm here with my wife, Helene, today because we have some exciting news on the sports program. And Helene, I got to tell you that I'm really shocked that you're here to talk about sports because you're constantly com complaining about too much sports on programs and you can't get me to do anything. Well, Jim, would you like me to give you an explanation to yes, that? Yes, I would. In my view, too many sports events today are based on salaries and other cash considerations. There is no spirit. With these high school championship games, and remember, Jim, we'll be viewing the telecast of the girls' events for the first time. Yeah. You see spirit, enthusiasm, the desire to win, just good fellowship at its very, very best. And, and remember, Helene, this is the championship games we're talking about, and it could be the last straw for so many of these young men and women to represent their schools. That's a very interesting point, Jim. Why don't we take this opportunity to invite our good Pennsylvania friends to join us in viewing the championship games of both our young men and women on the Pennsylvania Cable Network, PCN. Sounds like a wonderful idea, I mean. Good, we'll see you all there. PIAA championships throughout the year exclusively on PCN. In February, team wrestling. In March, individual wrestling and boys and girls basketball. In May, boys tennis. In June, boys volleyball, girls spring soccer, baseball, and softball. In November, girls tennis, girls volleyball, field hockey, and boys and girls soccer. And rounding out the year in December, championship football. For additional high school sporting events, check our webpage at PCNTV.com.
Live coverage of the Pennsylvania Farm Show begins Saturday, January 8th on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Watch the championship rodeo, livestock judging, horse and pony pulling contests, sheep to shaw competitions, and many other events capturing the flavor of Pennsylvania's premier agricultural showcase. Around the clock coverage of the Pennsylvania Farm Show begins January 8th on PCN. Now, live coverage of PIAA Championship Football continues exclusively on PCN. Welcome back to the Hershey Park Stadium, and uh, we are at halftime. There's your score, 7-7. Seven seven. Let's uh, see how we got there. Other numbers, uh, the storyline, of course, Dustin Pashotti injuring his ankle in the uh, second series of this game. Central Bucks West pretty much uh, dictating tempo as far as time of possession. A little bit of an advantage there. Eight first downs, 100 total yards for uh, CB West, 78, of course, on the ground. Uh, Erie Prep, 17 of those yards, I believe, came on the uh, touchdown pass from uh, the 24 yards, rather, on the pass from Carlson to Ed Hinkle, who just took it away from uh, Ted Kenyon in the uh, corner of the end zone. One turnover each. Uh, West uh, fumbled by uh, Dustin Pashotti and then uh, Erie Prep uh, Carlson fumbled and uh, that led to uh, West's only touchdown drive. And uh, let's uh, take a look and hand it over to Mark Shuey for some of the highlights and we'll show you the injury as well to Dustin Pashotti in this opening half. Well, we're going to start though with Dustin Pashotti, one of his few carries in this ball game and it's not a good one. Eric coughs it up in the first quarter of play for CB West. That has been a problem this season for the team. It only has a plus one in turnovers this season. Then it was Prep's turn to commit the turnover. Eric Carlson, quarterback for Erie Prep, looking around. And look, he coughs it up as the ball gets knocked out there. Joe Walter, that was a great play. Joe he was Walter all over him in that first out. half. Okay. 
That set up a touchdown drive, but before that, okay, That's here, the stop. Injury. We have the injury here. Look over here, Dustin Pashadi. This is what we're talking about. He injured his ankle. Keep going, keep going. Right here, Charles Rush turns over Dustin Pashadi's ankle. And it's away from the ball, clearly. Dustin Fashadi never returned to the game, so the game took a dramatic turn on that particular play. It was a uh, touchdown drive for Central Bucks West, and we're gonna see the touchdown right here. It's Ryan Blumberg in from one yard out, but it was a very costly drive, a 27-yard, six-play drive, and uh, that was Dustin Fashadi's uh, last play of the ball game. Now, got uh, Juwan Walker here. He's, uh, he's gonna take off on a 24-yard run. This is uh, the longest running play from scrimmage for Erie Prep in the first half of play. Jawan Walker, 28 yards in the first half of play, most of it on that long run. Now we're gonna see the Prep TD. It's a 24-yard pass play. And there it is, Carlson to Hinkle, but it's almost intercepted. Hinkle fights through the interception. <laughs> and one of the most creative efforts from a wide receiver we've seen this weekend. And uh, that's Ed Hinkle with the big touchdown reception, giving Erie Prep the tie with Central Bucks West at the half of the Quad A Championship game. This is down on the field. The wind's a little bit more significant than I thought it was uh, sitting up here, obviously, and a, a lot more comfort in the press box. Let's go down to the field right now. Our Gary Sutton is with the executive director of the PIAA, our host this weekend, Mr. Brad Cashman. Gary, take it away. They say they, you save the best for last, and we've got the best here in Brad Cashman, the executive director of the PIAA, the last championships of the 1900s. A little historical tonight, Brad. Well, this is a historical event, no question about it. We're really pleased to be here. We've had three great championship games, and we're halfway through a fourth one. We couldn't ask for a better finale. Two top-ranked teams, USA Today, playing for a state championship. It's been great so far. Brad, you look at the weekend, so many people involved in bringing off a championship like this. I guess we start with our people here in Hershey. Absolutely. The uh, people at Herco and Hershey Park uh, have been just absolutely fantastic. They're in the entertainment business, the family entertainment business, and they've just proven it again this year, this weekend, that they put on the best show that you can have. Plus, the people that have kept this field in such outstanding shape all weekend as well. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, grounds people have done a great job. They actually babied this thing. I think they've uh, they paid more attention to this field than they do their own families, which is not good sometimes, but in this case, we're really enjoying it. Brad, one of the things we've been astounded by all weekend has really been the officiating. We have the advantage up there of having instant replay. It's really borne out the fact that these guys really do a great job. They absolutely do. We had, uh, we feel we had some of the best crews we could bring into these championship games this weekend. But you know, the officiating is really only as good as the, the quality of the game itself. And we've seen three and a half great games and well-played games. And the officiating just goes along with it. I know every year you and I talk about sportsmanship, but I don't know that we've ever seen it better exemplified than this weekend by the eight teams that have come here to Hershey. That's a good point, Gary. We really are proud of the teams that have come in here. They've done a great job with the sportsmanship programs. They really have first-class operations, and it carries over not only in the classroom, but also in the athletic field, not only in football, but in all sports. Well, I know one of the things that happens, too, we talk so much about kids playing on the court or on the field or on the rink, wherever they might be, but we talk about character, and these kids certainly show the character doesn't end just on the field. It starts in the classroom. Absolutely. And one thing I'm, I'm extremely proud about our kids in this state is we think that dignity and respect are making a great comeback, and these are just fine examples tonight and this afternoon, yesterday afternoon, last night, of dignity and respect make a comeback, and the character counts. In the, in the part of the players as well as the adults that lead these teams. And Brad, you probably don't hear it enough, but maybe the last thank yous have to go out to you and your staff, Bob Lombardi, Melissa Nash, and all the other people who are so, so important in bringing off a championship with style, as you have certainly done this weekend. Well, we appreciate that, and uh, I'd like to, I would be remiss if I didn't thank also our support staff. We've got a great group of ladies back in the office. Deb Alford, my secretary, Bev Owens, Anita Fox, they work with the official program, Bob Lombardi. Linda Rudisill, Kathy Smith, our new bookkeeper, and uh, all the staff that we have is uh, just really doing a great job for us. And it's, it's a day-to-day -day thing. They come in there, they plug away, they do, they do a great uh, service to the schools and to the officials. And last but not least, the voice that you hear when you call the office first is our receptionist, Sherry Dean. And speaking of voices that you hear, it's been our pleasure 
in a partnership with the PIA this weekend for PCN and the WITF production crew bringing you these championships around the state. We appreciate that partnership. Well, you guys do a great job. I can't uh, express enough the, the fine job that PCN, WITF does, and you two guys do with the announcing and, and the color commentary you bring with you. It's been a great experience, a first-class affair, and we're really appreciative of that. Brad Cashman, exist, or not existent anymore. We've got all kinds of assistance today. Executive Director of the PIAA, we really appreciate everything. And again, congratulations on a great weekend. Thanks, Gary. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Chet? All right, Gary Sutton down with the uh, PIAA Executive Director. We got a shot of the uh, Central Bucks West mascot. He's right in season tonight. Reindeer. Well, there's the a shot Bucks. of Dustin Pashotti. He's walking on it, Mark. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to think he's iffy at best. I mean, I know it's a state championship environment. I mean, you can really just uh, see the disappointment. I mean, the whole mood of this game from a Central Bucks West standpoint changed. I don't know if we can get that replay back since we do have some time before we uh, kick off. In the second half, it, it it's Charles Rush, the great well, defensive tackle for uh, Erie Cathedral Prep, who went after him. It was a ball fake. Yeah, it was a fake handoff to Bashadi up the middle. Charles Rush, as as he is uh, he is supposed to do, went after Bashadi on the ball fake, and uh, and the play went to the left side to the near sidelines. And uh, during the during the uh, ensuing uh, play. Charles Rush tried to drag down Justin Prashadi and, uh, and kind of rolled up on the ankle. Perfectly clean. And he's, uh, from what we're here hearing, done for the night. And what Mark, take us through this. Charles Rush is number 59. He'll Here's Prashadi coming over here. The ball fake came to him. Rush, right there, is looking for Prashadi. Watch right in here. The left ankle. It's left ankle right, right there. Just, yeah, he rolled right through it, Mark. I don't think any doubt. Yep. See, Ooh. Pashadi, he, he thinks Pashadi still has the ball at this point. And Rush, right in there, is rolling up on Dustin Pashadi's ankle. As he thinks he still has the ball and is making the tackle on Pashadi. And there you see it wrapped up. It, it is the right ankle there, and that's the one that kind of got turned. You know, Rush is a big guy, obviously. 265 pounds officially. And uh, it, it's just a tough one, your final game of your career, where you're uh, going to sit out. At least that's the word we're getting. I mean, that's obviously could be subject to change, but he is just uh, just a sensational football player, and I think the player of the year in this state. Well, yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. You know, what's that taken out of the Central Bucks uh, offense? Well, it's taken <laughs> almost 1,700 yards rushing, yeah. 37 touchdowns. He's a pretty good decoy, too, for anything else you want to run, play action oh, and the boy. like. And, you know, he comes to play on the big nights last year. The state final ran for 236 yards. Well, there are the uh, Erie captains. Number 20, Damon Sanders, has had as good a night as we've seen in the defensive backfield. I mean, he's covering the run, Mark. He hasn't had much to do in the passing game, but he is a physical, physical okay, force. Sure is. Yeah. Let's go down there here. This referee, Donald Woodward. We welcome Gary Sutton back to the booth. Okay, wait. You deferred your choice. Which way you want to kick? Want to kick to that goal? Backs over here, Black. Over here, White. Here, White. Central Bucks West will ride the wind in the third quarter. Have a good half, gentlemen. Again, yeah, you know, it, it's not as bad as it was this afternoon for Mount Carmel and Tyrone. Tyrone won the game, by the way, 13 to 6. And it's certainly not as bad as last evening when we were at 40 miles an hour plus with the wind with Strathaven and West Allegheny, but uh, it's still significant. And it's still bone chilling cold down there on the field. And yeah, any this just didn't file, Gary? Yep. Yep. And those steps are growing. <laughs> I think they added about 10 flights since yeah, I ran well. up there this afternoon. Well, I think uh, in retrospect, your interview with Brad Cashman, I think it's safe to say this, that uh, with Hershey as the environment, really over the last couple of years, the bowl situation that they've been able to create here with Candy Lane and the other attractions, the Hershey Lodge, the Hotel Hershey, and all of the things that are around, that by having it here, it creates, indeed, just uh, one of the premier sporting events and one that's a circle event on the calendar well, every it's a year. Family and entertainment atmosphere, it really is, and, and it's fun. You look around here, you see the lights everywhere, you, you, See the crowd, feel the excitement. I mean, it's all happening right here. Well, keys, obviously, for Erie Prep, it was, you know, either get the lead or stay close. 7-7, seven, seven, that's close. For West, they're going to have to kind of reinvent some things. But the system helps, Mark, a lot. 
Well, the system does help, but now Coach Mike Pett may have to bring in new people. And uh, Central Bucks West has had one problem this year, and that is with turnovers. So, with these new people, you can't uh, you can't expect maybe new people to come in and execute as, as finely as uh, as maybe the others, the front line guys. But uh, Central Bucks West, no turnovers. Uh, I think uh, I think you really have to cut down on the, on your. Uh, ability to make mistakes or and, and try to force Erie Prep into making some mistakes. I think you also have to be careful with your Central Bucks West not to leave your identity too quickly and start to go to the passing game and eschew the running game. Bob Tumulty will kick. This is Hinkle. He is a blur across the 30, 35 to the 38 yard line. Good return upfield Damon Sanders to the 38. Tackle is made by Cambron. You want to see how fast this guy is? Watch this. He gets to a hole. Now he's going at one speed. Now watch him turn on the afterburners. Stop right here. Just a little hole right in there. Watch how fast he gets through it. Look at this. Just a blur, as you mentioned, Jed. Eric Carlson is the quarterback, 5'11, 190 pound senior. He's got the arm to be able to play with. If you exploit Sanders, big hole gets to the outside. Look out. He's in the clear all the way down to the Central Bucks 40 yard line. Just a simple off guard play that he turned into a huge play. And let's watch him. You can credit the speed of Sanders for making this play click. Watch this. Seal block there on the side. Charles Rush leading the way. And he just outruns the defense. Jake Lynch really set a block there that got him wide open to the outside. Jake Lynch, of course, a 6'2", 210-pound senior. Cameron there to push him out after a 21-yard gain. It's going to be Jawan Walker, I believe, to the 40-yard line. Gain of two or three, and that's it. Ryan Blumgren in on the stop for CB West. Big start for Cathedral Prep here in this third quarter, opening minute in a 7-7 ball game in the championship in Quad A. over the middle and it bounces free. Cameron almost intercepted. Pass intended for Josh Lustig and the ball just sailing on Carlson a little bit. What outstanding play by Dave Cameron back there. Going for the ball, playing it right at the last bone. You'll see him reach over the top. Good hiding the ball right there by Carlson. Now watch. Cameron, man in front of him. Cameron's going to come right over that right hand. And really, the ball was just thrown behind yeah. that time. Yeah, Cameron was actually playing the man. And I the ball was thrown at him. I gave him way too much credit that time, Jeff. <laughs> well, those, those timing routes, you've got to have the ball there <laughs> when the receiver turns around. Carlson back. This time, Lustig, knee down at the 30-yard line. Well, I thought his knee was down at the air. Going to mark him down all the way to the 24. We'll see this again in replay. It looked like his knee slipped, but he probably kept it up. Well, we'll see when he puts the knee down. Let's, let's watch here. Good pass. Carlson really putting some zing in the ball. Stop it right here. And we're watching the knee. Watch it again. Ooh. That's oh, down. Knees down. Right there. Five-yard break for Erie. They're going right back to the air. Step around move. Yep. And Lustig still going, but I'll tell you what. Did he fumble oh. the football? Did it come loose? How many times you see That's that happen? To see. Kenyon thought that ball popped out of there and they're saying maybe the ground caused the fumble. I think that's exactly what they're saying. It's going to remain second down and it's going to be remain with Erie Cathedral Prep. Well, we're going to be able to see this again here. They're calling it second down. We've got to wait as Erie's in and out of the huddle. 10-15 to go and most intriguing start to this third quarter. Carlson under center. This is Demond Sanders. Big hole to the outside of the 10-5. Harry preps on the lead. Touchdown. 17 yards. Demond Sanders. Second time we saw that play run in this series. And both times for big chunks of yardage. And watch the hole open up right here. He tests the middle. Quick jute. And right behind number 59. And we're looking right there at uh, Charles Rush. Who else offensively leading the way? Big time hole exploding on the right side. His 21-yard gain started the drive. A 17-yard run ends a scoring drive. And on for the conversion is Jason Dolick. Kicking into the teeth of the win. High snap. Kick up, 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 up. No good. It's short. 
I'll tell you, people who tuned in to see a fine running back aren't disappointed because Demond Sanders is certainly picking up and uh, looking like uh, one of the top backs in the state, which he is. Demond Sanders coming in. Here's here's where we're going to see the kick, and here you see some of the wind, the effect of the wind. You can see the flags uh, in the background there. That's not a wounded duck. That's one that got killed up in the air, just coming down. Now and here's Demon Sanders. Watch Rush leading the play here. Here comes 59 to watch. Right in behind him, the tackle. 59 Rush, and right in behind him, Sanders. And you can see how easy it is to make decisions. You got a big guy out in front flocking like that. Boy, boy, Charles Rush on a defensive halfback. That's a tremendous mismatch. Well, Charles Sanders, Rush, a great player. 270 I'll tell you. pounds. There's Demon <laughs> Sanders. Broke his foot earlier in the year, October 9th on a defensive play. He's coming on a blitz, tripped over his own teammate. Missed six weeks of action. I know that uh, he is being recruited heavily as a uh, defensive back. Probably the University of Iowa. Let's take a look at leader. Here's the extra point, but we are going back to live action here momentarily. Uh, not a good snap, not a good hold. Just got underneath it there. It's kind of like hitting underneath a, uh, a wedge shot that gets on a lot of grass. You never really hit the ball. Kenyon calls the fair catch. Well, for Central Bucks West, here's your game reset. Dustin Pashotti, your star player, leading ground gainer, linchpin franchise player, out of this game with a uh, ankle problem that was suffered on their second possession. A 44 game winning streak very much up in the air now trailing 13 to 7 but they did trail in the Eastern final a week ago 14 to 7 late into the fourth quarter. Oreo this is Cameron Cameron step around move but not much there as he gets slammed down at about the 35 yard line by Jason Easter and now Cameron's hurt and keep in mind he's been suffering from shin splints. Here you go, here's the pitch back. Student body right, as it were. Pitch back to Cameron, good blocking out in front. A guy that's been blocking well the whole game, Miski leads the way. And Cameron comes down hard on that left ankle. Uh, you know, you gotta expect, I mean, this is Central Bucks West 15th game of the season. And you know, these kids, they, they, they just well, punish is, uh, one another each and every weekend. I mean, we talked about Cameron. He's got shin splints, and he's been in agony. I mean, Pashati coming into this oh, game. Oh, right here. There it is. Yeah. The helmet of, uh, is that uh, number 79? That, That's going to be uh, Jonathan Sitter. Jonathan Sitter came in. See you one more time. Rolled up on the right leg of Cameron. Court huddles. Court huddles. Court huddles. And you've got, uh, I think I said hip pointer earlier in the game on uh, to Giacomo. Get the and go. But he's suffering from uh, an ankle injury, which was suffered against Bethlehem Catholic last week. So, doesn't seem to be a ton of concern here. I think he's okay. At the ding. Well, he got well. Well, I think they're, they're always he's concerned. Not putting a whole lot of weight on it, considering uh, he looks considerably better than happened. Dip Pichotti yeah, when he came off the field. Believe I'll say me. Yeah, that, that's unfortunately that looks all too familiar to Coach Mike Pett. Well, the thing that really hurts you in the high school game is that you are losing two positions. Because guys play it both ways. That's exactly right. Cameron's a great player defensively for them. The Giacomo is in at fullback or at the tailback spot. They're going to go to Blumber, and he's going to get a lot more touches now, and he slides to the 40. Short of a first down, it'll be third and short upcoming now for Central Bucks West. You're looking at Ryan Blumgren, Travis Blumgren, his older brother, started his career at Penn State. Again, super blocking up front, and we saw Miski again uh, opening up the initial hole for Blumgren to get through. Miski, 3.65 grade point average, and the reason Coach Mike Patton likes him, he says, hey, intelligent people, they make intelligent decisions. From the eyebrows up, this team is hard to match. Very smart, very poised football team. Blumgren head down right at the stick. This will be a mark. I think he's there, but they'll probably bring the chains in just to make sure. No need to, they like what they saw right on the field. There's another familiar sight that Coach Mike Petton doesn't want to see Dave Cameron getting his right ankle looked at. Much overused trainer's table tonight from a Central Bucks West standpoint. Taking the shoe off, getting a better look at things. So he's not back anytime soon. I'm sure they're rushing things through, but they want to make sure he's okay. Oreo, this will be the Giacomo's second carry. The Giacomo flies forward into the air and 
It's got good yardage. Joe Dupree is there to bring him down. Talked about Dupree, 6'5", 235. And here you see again the pitch out. Got an nice, injured player. Nice job of looking over the defense and then leaping for as much as you can get. Giacomo is also the backup quarterback for Central Bucks West, so that tells you where they're at on the depth chart here. That's Jonathan Sitter who's banged up, and he's in pain at the 46. Well, we knew there was going to be nothing subtle about this game. The hitting has been ferocious on both sides in the trenches, as you would expect in a Pennsylvania State Championship. Like I said, it's uh, actually Mike Ward that's down there. Uh, or check that. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Yeah, that is Jonathan, Jonathan Sitter. Sitter, right. as we said. Jonathan Sitter, who looks like he's uh, just got the air knocked out of him. Here, Cathedral Prep comes in. This is their 14th game in the season, number 15 for Central Bucks West. So, you know, it gets this late in the day. And I'll tell you, you know, you're going to have these kind of injuries. Everybody's going to come in with some kind of uh, dinged up uh, bangs or scrapes. Uh, you can't go through 14, 15 games and not uh, uh, take a couple of stingers. But, uh, you know, it, it, especially the level of competition that these two teams have been playing week in, week out since the playoffs began, you're going to take some hard knocks. This is the 4A game. Lots of big bodies hitting each other out there. Ball at the 46-yard line for Central Bucks West. Their own 46. Oriole under center. This will be DiGiacomo trying to get outside. I don't think so. Joe Dupree says, huh, you're going down here right away with power. And DiGiacomo reaching for his right leg as he's trying to get up, but you'll see it here. And they went right at him, got him right around the right ankle and pushed him down. And DiGiacomo is up. He's limping, but he's they're going to have to take him out. He's trying to run it off. There you see the Erie prep faithful. Big contingent coming down from Erie. Watching there. You talk Cathedral about one of the prep team. One of the great sports towns in Pennsylvania. You're talking about Erie. No question about it. One of my favorite restaurants ever up there. Hector's. Back, looking, under the gun, has wide open field. Oh, Harry Krepp climbs all over him at the 48-yard line. I believe that's Tom Morgan on the stop. Josh Lustig also there, laid a lick. And where they're spotting the ball, a first down for Central Bucks West. Here we're gonna see uh, Oriole looking, looking to throw, but the coverage is there in the secondary, so he just takes it up under his arm and starts to run, and look at that pop. Look at him die for the Lustig. stakes, though, and that's the kind of play you need right now is someone's got to step up with all the injuries that are hurting Central Bucks West. Cambron out, Bishotti out. The Giacomo walking off a bucky ankle. Motion man right there is Kenyon. Lumgren with the carry and nothing there at the 45-yard line. Looks I'll to tell me. You, the gang tackling of this prep defense, most impressive. The first guy there is Eric Field. And there's what Blumgren sees as he's met by two people right along that line. Looks to me like the trainers are putting the shoe back on Dave Camber. There you see Eric Field who just made that last tackle. He's limping around a little bit. It's tough out there, I'll tell you. It's cold, a little bit windy. And they are banging hard. These two teams both played very tough games last week in their finals. Blitz is coming. Oreo unloads. And Kenyon did not hang on. Oh, boy. He trapped Oreo... it in the ground. Henkel is there on coverage. Did Oreo pay a price for that oh. one? Oh, he went down, didn't he? He got pancaked. Watch this. Watch Oreo from this angle, and we'll see if we can see the end of the play. Guns it downfield, but watch the hit he takes. Ooh. Right off your screen, that's how hard that was. Charles Rush in the front, and I don't know who, some white bullet coming in from the side. <laughs> Number four. You're on TV, <laughs> that's no, you're not. Easter <laughs> coming from the defensive <laughs> halfback side on a blitz, and all I just saw was a white jersey come flying in. Ninth play of the drive for Central Bucks West. They gotta convert third down and nine as Oreo goes rolling. Looks, throws, pass, dropped. Sensational play by Josh Lustig in coverage. Kenyon just couldn't hang on. Lustig popped it out of there. That's the way you play the defensive back position right there as Lustig just came up and wrapped him right away as soon as the ball touched hands. Take a look at it again, and you'll see how hard it is out there to catch a football 
And you catch the ball, as we said, you draw a lot of company, and here it is. Watch this. Catch it and hit. Lustig. 13 to 7, our score. Harry Prep on the lead, and Central will uh, Central Bucks will punt. High end over end kick by James West. And Hinkles down in a pile all the way back at the six. Hinkles had a rough night in punt returns. He let one drop, put them all the way back to their one yard line. This time, he picks it up, and all of a sudden, there's five or six Central Bucks West players all over. Special teams play definitely going the way of Central Bucks West tonight as they pin area Cathedral back inside the nine yard line now and hope to be able to hold them three and out. Erie Cathedral Prep looking to try to build another drive to maybe take them home to glory. Well, they went into the win for their go ahead score in this quarter. Devon Sanders, he took a wallop at the line of scrimmage and somehow held on to the football. That was Angelo Polina up front that time, really meeting him initially. How about that? All the seniors you see today have not lost a game. <laughs> that is incredible. Last loss for Central Bucks West came back in the 1996 season. Lost to Plymouth White Marsh. Since then, they peeled off 44 straight victories, including two, two state championships. Those who played a softball, rather, it's probably easier. Sanders again, he gets free. Check that, Jawan Walker to the 17-yard line. You know, and what makes that run from Central Bucks West even that much more amazing is I think it's very, very difficult to even try to get back to the state final round in the quad A level, let alone win it twice in a row and get back a third time. I think that is just a, an amazing feat in itself. Juan Tyrone beat a defending state champ earlier today in Mount Carmel in double A, 13 to seven. Oh, we've seen some great, great football here this weekend. Four great games. Sanders has a big hole. Look out, and he's across the 30 to the 31-yard line. What a flashy talent he is with the football. He just darts to the line of scrimmage, and boom, he's in the open space. That off-tackle play has been so good to this team this half. Look at this here. Wide open. Look at that. Sanders threw again. He ran two big plays before, including one for the set up the touchdown, and now here he is again. Andrew Elsing in on the stop there. First and 10 for Prep at the 31, and we've got a flag. <laughs> See what this could be. Probably lining up in the neutral zone, maybe. It's against it. It's against Prep. Dead ball. Ball start. Against the offense. Repeat first down. That creates first and 15. 436 to go in this third quarter of play. Yeah. You really can't see any movement along the line from there. Must have just been lined up. Now Central Bucks West has lost uh, one of their top players, the top guy on the board, and Dustin Pashati to an ankle injury. Dave Camburn is probably going to return. He was hurt. And now throwing into there is uh, Carlson, incomplete. Carlson, nice, heady senior. This is a senior-oriented offense for Erie Cathedral Prep. Young coach Mike Mishler, and only second year on the job has navigated his team to a state championship, and here he is on the lead in the third quarter. But Mishler looking rather dapper over there with his tie and blue uh, sweater on. Carlson, quick handoff to the outside. Big hole for Jawan Walker, but it closes in a hurry at about the 29-yard line. Looked like Walker was going to get free there. Well, you might wonder, why do you run over the right tackle all night long? Take a look. You put number 59 over there, you get in behind a guy like him, and also a guy like number 74, the pulling guard, Dale Williams, who's 6'7", 285, and you may find some holes on that right side of the line. That's like college weights and heights that we're talking about here. Carlson on third and 11. He's over his last six in the air. He's going to have to run out of the pocket, and down he goes again. Hit on the stop. Great game today for Andrew Elsing, who's been crawling all over him back there. Now they'll punt into the win. 3.33 left to go here in this uh, third right quarter there. of play. And you'll see right there, you want to keep the quarterback in that lane up the middle. Don't let him get to the outside. And a beautiful job by Central Bucks West defensively keeping the nice quarterback snap. phoned in. Oh, Hinkle hits it high into the air. 
and Erie will cover at the 47 yard line. Erie Prep leads by six, 13 7. 3 10 left in this third quarter of play. And the uh, Central Bucks West fans coming to their feet trying to urge their offense on. Their sense of concern is here. This is gritty, this performance here by West. And yeah, they've certainly had to dig deep into the depth tonight that has been Central Bucks West with his 44 game winning streak. As prophetically, we see number 44 run onto the field last there. Central Bucks West, uh, I think the fans now with 3.10 to go here in the third quarter know this is a time. This is a pitch. This is going to be Andy Schmidt. Schmidt positive yardage into Erie Prep territory to about the 48 or 49 yard line. Joe Dupree is in on the stop for the Ramblers. Look at this. The pitch out. Andy Schmidt looking it over. Good pull that time by Ryan Blumgren leading out in front of him. Now Schmidt able to go by the block by Blumgren and pick up yardage. Officials time out there to the 48 yard line, 244. I think we're seeing what we talked about earlier on is uh, Mike Pettin, coach of Central Bucks West, putting people in, giving a lot of people a shot to play here, trying to fight the right, find the right combinations put the right people in for the right plays. And it's uh, deemed necessary due to the injuries to the running back core. Andy Schmidt, oh, they're going to throw out of this. To Giacomo is a backup quarterback, and up easy, up easy. he's sacked all the way back at the 46-yard line. Who? Joe Dupree, number 40 for Erie Prep. And that's the consummate coverage sack. Nowhere to throw it right now, and all of a sudden, all kinds of white and orange converging on you. Dupree leading, leading the pack. Damon Sanders coming up, blitzing out of the defensive backfield. That young man, number 40, has had quite a game tonight. Same with 20. I'll tell you, they're, they're, they've got some really significant talents. 6'5", <laughs> 235, and goes like a jet. And Dupree is already looking at major schools, hearing from the likes of Notre Dame, Penn State, the University of Pittsburgh, all of the majors among the pantheon of the country. Oreo looking on third at 12. There haven't been much open downfield. This one is, but it's, and it's good enough for the first down. Nice catch by Kenyon, who's had to make some plays out of the wide receiver spot. You almost sense that they have to throw more than Coach Mike Pettin wants right now, but watch Oreo set up, squares those shoulders, and now really puts a little mustard on this pass as he finds his man downfield, Ted Kenyon. Good catch, first down, Central Bucks West. They're running away from Charles Rush's side, yeah. too. Smart thinking. Good the job. Other you know, the other problem, guys, is that without Pashadi in the lineup, Erie Prep on defense is not showing as much respect for the other guys as they would so selling the play fake is certainly harder to do with Bashadi on the sideline although his jacket's off and he's trying to test that ankle I think he sees his team down by six and he's going to try and gut one out the smart move here by Central Bucks West in the second half has been to make most of their play calling to the left side and away from rush and they continue to do that and that time a very very nice pass play yeah Looking for Dave Cameron on the sidelines, too. I not seem to be able to spot I haven't him. I've seen him, but I know Pashani is taking room. his jacket off. Yeah. I mean, they may say he's out, but he may change their minds. Blumberg, big hole up the middle, has five and about eight yards all the way up to the 33 yard line. The two time defending state champs showing you why they are just an incredibly tough out. Well, you don't get here as a one-man team. You can see right here Blumgren going through, and again, that blocking ever consistent for Central Bucks West, the leading wall for whoever is running behind it. Joe Dupree in on the stop again with 105 left here in this third quarter of play. 13 to 7, Erie Prep on the lead, but Central Bucks is driving here. It'll be blown to nothing there, hit immediately by Jason Easter. Make that Tom Morgan. <laughs> you know, a play they ran in the first half, they being Central Bucks West, that they've not run at all this half, was that little play action play where Oriole fakes the handoff and goes around the outside himself as we see Blumgren brought down one more time. Wouldn't be surprised to see that somewhere here in this next two or three plays. The shot is really trying to stand on that ankle. It's his right ankle over on the Central Bucks West sideline. I don't know. We might just see him yet. Timeout Central Bucks West. 16 seconds left in the third quarter. 
There you see Dustin Pashotti. Is that right ankle heavily taped? The good sign is that he's upright and walking around on it. It took him at least another quarter after he injured that ankle to, uh, to get off the trainer's bench and be able to put a little bit of weight on it. When he first left the field, he could not even put uh, a bit of weight on it. But it wasn't even touching the ground. It's still really ginger. Yeah, it is. Yeah, watch this, guys. This is uh, Oreo coming over. Um, Polina, I think, was late coming onto the field, and that's why they had to use a timeout. Ooh. And he's hearing it as well <laughs> over on the uh, sideline from the boss. Coach Mike Pettins calming things down there, getting the troops wow. in order. I mean, you know, with 16 seconds left in the third quarter of a championship game, that's not the time to start bickering among yourselves as teammates. Uh, well, as a coach, you want to see your kids police themselves, but uh, <laughs> maybe not deliver the knockout punch. That, you know, uh, that stuff happens in practice, but yeah. not, not in the third quarter of a championship game. I'm sure that will be forgotten about. Oh, yeah. You know, what happens there? the emotion there, of the moment. Sure. It's team. I mean, you're talking about, hey, we can't afford mistakes right now. We got guys that now see him running back with him. This is beautiful. You see the young man running right back there with him, Oriel, talking to him and saying, hey, listen, come on. We're a team. We got to win this game as a team. We can't be making mistakes now. Elena is a senior who's been a member of the previous two, a significant contributor. Here we go on third down and three for Central Bucks West. And off Blumgren, and he may have tripped over Oreo. That's exactly Maybe. what happened. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Oreo was late getting his foot out of there. Watch this. Here's Watch down low. Here's the handoff. And now right there, you see? The foot no, he just... tripped over his own leg, looked like to me. Either way, it's fourth and yeah, four. Yeah, yeah it, the stumble happened right at the outset. There we go. As usual, we'll get a look at it. Had to be some kind of contact, and that's the end of the third quarter of play. And Central Bucks West now will look at fourth and four into the wind. There's some of this large crowd. Uh, great crowds for both sessions today and really all weekend long. Oh, well, you know why? Because the best teams are here, really. And this, this year, the best teams made it to the finals, no question about it. And I think that's one reason we've seen four great games throughout the weekend. Each and every game has been a very compelling matchup. Oh, boy. Look wow, there. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> Those guys ought to be on the team. That's Joel Bechtel. <laughs> Flip Cousins over there, our director. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's a, that's a tough crew. Suit those kids up. If they'll wear a jersey. Looks like they like to go bareback. There's Joel Bechtel, executive There's producer. the real Joel Bechtel with Melissa Nash. Melissa Nash. <laughs> now, which is the better looking of those two? That's a hard call. Melissa knows we're kidding. We love Joel. He does a great job. He's our executive producer. Runs all over the place over these two days. Ball is down, and it's covered immediately. And... That's Dave Camber. Camber. The good news yeah, is Camber. will back to Erie Cathedral Prep on downs. Yeah, but the good news is Camber's back in the ball game for this fourth quarter for Central Bucks West. Turnovers or near turnovers have been a real Achilles heel throughout this year, somewhat for Central Bucks West. They've been able to manage the giveaway takeaway disparity. I mean, they came in plus one, but I mean, they have turned it over and Mike Fenton told us one of these days it's really gonna catch up to us. And there you had a quarter break that turned out to be another timeout and really uh, did not make the most of it. Harry Cathedral prep now on the break. This is Jawan Walker. Boy, I thought he had a big time hole and Elsing came in to just close it down along with Rob Bowser. Rob Bowser makes a heck of a, an ankle tackle here. Watch this. Got the draw play, and now here comes Bowser, and wham. That's big-time athletic ability right there. Sure is. Rob Bowser, defensive lineman, offensive lineman. Says best offensive lineman, Coach Mike Betton says, on the team. Back goes Carlson, play action. Carlson dumps it, pass caught, first down. They got the big tight end of the 49-yard line. That's a huge gain right there as Jake Lynch comes up with it. Big, big Jake on that play. Watch Carlson hide the ball really nicely on his hip right here. Look at this. Yeah. 
Hides it on his hip. Now he sets up. He just bought himself an extra second and third. Now he can step up into the pocket, put a little mustard on the ball, and there he finds Lynch. And Lynch does the rest. He gets five more yards on his own. You're right, Gary. That takes some great athleticism from a quarterback to hide it on your hip, turn around, square up, and throw it with your right hand. 14 yards on the play. They're playing with a wind prevailing somewhat to their back. Big hole up the middle by Sanders. And oh, did that close in a hurry. Oh, hi. Whoa. Brian Callahan. Gavin Potter stepping in there as well to shut it down. And watch this. Wide open hole that, <laughs> wow. A sea of black and gold. And linebacker spot's been an active spot for both teams today. That was a vicious hit there on Sanders. Harry Cathedral Prep. Would this be an upset? Yeah. 44 game win streak. Walker trying to get to the outside, but Central Bucks West will string him out. Blumgren finally wraps up the play. Good play by Polina to block out the lane. And Blumgren cleans up the deal right on the outside, creating third and about six here for Erie Prep. It'd be an upset simply. You got a back to back state champ. You got 44 game winning streak. You got the third ranked team nationally in the country. Erie Prep ninth. What people don't know, though, is how far you've had to dig into your bag of tricks tonight with all the injuries, and that's the intangible that people around the country would not understand, not taking anything away from Mary Cathedral Prep. Now they may have uh, jumped off in the neutral zone a little bit. Back it up five. Well, but one thing I like about Mike Petton, he'll never make that excuse afterwards. Here's the call. Start. Yes, the offense. Still third down. Ball start. <laughs> Gary Cathedral Prep only one out of eight on third down conversions thus far in the game. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it, I would term it maybe a mild upset because, you know, you've got an Erie Prep Very team mild. that's just yeah, come great. in and just... Uh, uh, destroyed people all here. season long. Beat a very good Woodland Hills team to get here. Top so, scoring team in the state of Pennsylvania. West is leading two to one in the three games played. Walker, big hole, has five, and he's got positive yardage across the 45 to about the 43-yard line. Colloran is there for the stop. I can hear the quarterback. Colohan. They started to send the putting team onto the field, but uh, hear now here they come. You want to kick because you've got the wind to your back yep. and you can dictate some field position. That's a big stand for that CB West defense right there. They really needed that. Get the ball back. Underneath nine minutes to go now in the football game. Well, you don't get to these kind of championships oh, without down. great character the on the part down. of both teams. Now they want the band out. chatting this time and saying the band can't never play, seen huh? that. No, I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen a little of everything in this yeah, game. This tonight. has been an entertaining game it's in like every Patton sense of talking it over. You, know, you can pick on anybody you want to in the stands, but don't pick on the band. I think I heard Mo Coach Mike Patton tell the referee, he goes, well, my crowd can yell then, right? <laughs> you can see the players starting to get the crowd into it. Coaches too. punt will go into the end zone. You know, they always say in education that there's three groups of people you don't want to make bad. The custodians, the people working the cafeteria, or the band. I think the referee just got the band on his bad side. <laughs> 13 to 7 with 848 left in the fourth quarter. I said, I can't hear the quarterback. <laughs> Now the Erie Cathedral prep band's getting fired up on the other side. They don't have a band. Well, the stakes are getting, uh, it's winning time here. Into the football game, big hole, Bob Warden's first carry. And he's headed into it by Joe Dupree. Like Warden, to, fresh legs, a junior. I'd like to have that be your first carry of the game. You're in a state championship with 8.32 to go, and you're down by six. And look at this. Rumbling over the left-hand side. Hey, he's fresh legs. Right now, that's big in this game. 
Warden's going to get a second opportunity. Cuts to the outside and runs right into the uh, coaching staff over there, short of a first down. Third and about a yard. Oh, boy. Big They're Nick slow Daly. getting up, too, aren't they? Big Nick Daly slow in getting up. He's been banging into Charles Rush all night. Take a look. He has to get right up here to the 30-yard line, or just inside the 30-yard line, about 29. 8.15 to go in this football game. 13 to 7, Erie Cathedral Prep leading here. Short yard. Blumgren flies forward, and I think he got it. He had to get across the 29 and a half. He should be all right for the first down. He is. Got to move the chains. Well, Central Bucks West, 44 game win streak, back to back state championships. Table stakes are high here. You know, this is only the second time since the PIAA championships began in 1988 that the WPIAL team is not represented in the Quad A game. So it takes one heck of a team to knock out the WPIAL from the Quad A title game. Oriole is going to be a keeper. This is a design play and gets out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. I think that was actually supposed to be a handoff. I thought Oriole just fumbled the ball momentarily and kind of grabbed it and said, well, I'll take care of it myself. Then we're going to find out here. Watch this. He really doesn't get the handle on until the end and says, oh, I'll take off. Well, I think he saw that Blumgren was going to get whacked and pulled it out of there. Good decision by the quarterback. Yeah, Mike Cray was coming in. That's on awesome. linebacker football. spot. Yep. That's DeMond Sanders. He is. He's dinged up, too. He's emptied his tank. He's, as, he's had a fine a game mark as I've seen in this tournament in the defensive backfield. He is all over the place, creating it, wreaking havoc. This is Bobby Warden, third carry. Uh-uh. Ooh. That's a big time thrust there. Josh Lustig, Eric Field called his name a lot, and the big war daddy down there, Charles Rush. Charles Rush. What a handful he is. That's a motor that doesn't stop running. Yep, here he comes. Oh. Look at the convergence Whoa. right there from the linebackers, and Charles Rush came in from the interior line. Charles it's Rush great in the, pursuit. On the ground, Charles Rush is scary enough. In the air, it's like watching a bomber coming at you. Third and three for Central Bucks West. And uh, Blumgren picks his way to the 40-yard line. He's about a half yard shy of a first down. They may have to go for it here. 7:01, seven minutes, counting to go in the game. They're going to need, let's see, I'd say about a yard, half yard to a yard. There's no question they're going for it. Yeah, it's about a half yard. You're right, Chad. Yeah. They they just yards. get across the 40-yard line. He has enough confidence in his defense to be able to give it back to him. They've got their full allotment. Well, they've got two timeouts remaining. Keep in mind they had to burn one on the late substitution. About a half yard to go. Handoff goes to Blumgren. First down. He's across the 40 easily. Second effort. Hit at the line of scrimmage nearly in the backfield. Pretty good lead block by Polina that time. You know what's amazing, though? You know what's coming from this team, and you can't stop it. They do it so well, blocking, and then you get gutsy plays like this with Blumgren just diving ahead and getting the necessary yardage. There's your time now up on the screen. Large, concerned crowd from Central Bucks West. They're not used to watching the fourth quarter with their team having to make some plays. This is the second straight week, Mark. They've had to do that. Yeah, Becca right. High found themselves down last week about this time of the ball game really had their feet in the fire a week ago in the East Final. And with the stars out of there right now, there's not as much potential for the big yardage type plays. So they're going in short spurts. Here's a new look. Yeah. Three wide receivers set in the game. Now Kenyon lines up in a wide out. And we've got a whistle. Clock ran out. And the clock ran out. The 25 snuff. They called a timeout. Oh, boy. Wow. That was a touchdown, fellas. Whoa. That was a great formation, great play. Three well, wide obviously right. Obviously, that, that formation there, Erie saw something they didn't like and, That's and exactly quickly right. called timeout. That's exactly and right. And barely beat the count. Whoa. 
Official came over to Mike Pettin and said the timeout was called first, coach. You're going to see right there, timeout, timeout. You can see the call right there as uh, Sanders gets his hands together. There it is. Got, uh, we just got word on the truck that uh, Dustin Pashati has been cleared by the uh, doctors to play. The decision is up to him. So he is walking around. So we might see him back soon. That'll be a huge bolt when this crowd sees that. They obviously do not know, but I would expect to see him back in the football game. If the decision's up to him, he's in the game. There he is right there. Okay, he's standing by himself down near the 40-yard line, right, looking very intently at the field. There's 5.58 to go in the football game. First and 10, the ball at the 41-yard line. Going downfield, got a man, and it's, oh, couldn't hang on. Andy Schmidt was out there. That was a pretty good throw by Oreo, throwing into that crossing wind there. Throwing away on the, the run. Yeah. Andy, Sch Andy Schmidt just going on a deep corner here. Quarterback Oreo rolling right, rolling right. Didn't really set his foot that time and get the good leverage on it that he needed. You see kind of a wounded duck. And good Schmidt, toss. Schmidt still almost pulling it yeah. in. Good toss. Coverage was there. The secondary. That was not bad coverage. 5.49 left in this uh, ball game. There's Mike Oreo, the junior quarterback, trying to lead a dramatic comeback. Oreo play action again, this time under the gun, and he goes down in a pile. Big time play there. Mike Cray. Well, Mike Cray's been doing that all night, coming in from his linebacker spot. That time he laid a lick on Mike Oriole, CB West quarterback. Watch this. Here comes Cray from your left. Boom. Right on the knees. Worst part is, too, you see him kind of lurch back there at the quarterback spot. Guy's going right for your chest. You have no way to protect yourself, and it certainly gets mental as you throw the ball a little bit short there. And then Cray came back and helped him up, and that's the kind of sportsmanship you like to see in these state championship games. Oreo now three for 12 in the football game, throwing the ball. It's third and 10, something they will do. This may be two down country here to get a first. Oreo back, looks, throws, got a man wide open, it's caught. This is Kyle Hanley, he's got it all the way down to the 23 yard line. What a throw by Oreo. What a route by Callahan, the tight end, releasing on the drag. And he's got a big gainer of 36 yards. And now Central Bucks West, the champion that will not die easily. Callahan just on the fly route straight down the middle of the field. And you see him get it right there and then take it off dead for the goal line. Kind of a late release at the line of scrimmage, set up like he was going to block. Released from the block, straight down the field. Beautiful pass from Oriole, big game for CB West. 13 to 7 the score. Pitch. This is Harden. That's only his fourth carry, and he's inside the 10 and slams it all the way to the six yard line. Bob Gain of 17. Warden has been a fresh, fresh bolt for them today. Great block on Joe Dupree, the linebacker. Good, tough run by Warden. Warden will dot the eye, gets a carry again, and he is hit by Lustig behind the line of scrimmage and goes down. He may have lost a yard back there. There's four minutes and 57 and counting to go in the football game. And Central Bucks West has it. Goal to go now, back at the eight yard line. Well, what an outstanding game we've seen here tonight. You talk about championships. Both these teams, true champions. Oreo under center. Oreo's on a keeper, trying to find some room. Nothing there. He's out at the nine. Eric Fields got him. That was that play we talked about that we saw in the first half a couple of times, and certainly there was smelled out. There's the play action fake turning. And nothing doing for Erie Cathedral Prep. Look at him fill the holes in laterally. Great pursuit, great speed. Eric They're going to take a timeout right now to talk this one over. This is uh, really a moment of truth, these two downs that they have to get into the end zone. Eric Fields, the guy you're looking at there, number 33. Great play. Just fought off a, what looked to be a pretty good block. Made the play. 
Eric Fields and the Erie Cathedral Prep guys in a ball game here, 13 to seven. Prep leads CB West, 427 to go, fourth quarter. Wait, that's two left. There you see the Central Bucks West sidelines. Head coach Mike Petton gathering around. Dustin Machadi still standing there. And I'll tell you what, you gain a lot of respect for coaches in tough situations. How about Mike Petton tonight? Machadi ready to play. Mike Petton says, no, I'm not taking a chance, and goes with the other guys. That's confidence, and that's when your team really learns to rally around you as a coach and rally around your team together. Ball back at the nine-yard line. It's 13 to 7. You're looking at a guy who's played one whale of a football game tonight, Dupree. and that's Joe Dupree. Oh, big time. His dad played at Erie Prep. His brothers have before him. You talk about he, you talk about Sanders, and you talk about Rush tonight, the fearsome and threesome for Erie Cathedral Prep. And Eric Carlson, too, the quarterback, has had a fine yep. game this evening for the Ramblers. 13th play of the drive upcoming for Central Bucks West. Watch Oreo maybe on a rollout. Option run or pass. Pinion, Oreo, rolling, and the ball is tipped, and it's going to be fourth down now. It was tipped by Jake Lynch. You see him right there. Jake Lynch thought he maybe had a chance at an interception, but he got a hand on it, and that was the main thing. Watch right here. Jake Lynch coming over, and he'll tip it right there. Ooh. Yeah, that's dangerous toss. They have saved a touchdown, though. He gets that over, and that's he's in. Yeah, Jake Lynch. Uh, Doing exactly what he's got to do go. on that outside linebacker spot. Will they get the ball back? They only have one timeout now, so they don't get in here. Obviously, they've left Harry Prep in some pretty horrific shape field position-wise, but how about Cole again? Say, watch out. And they've got him, and he's sacked all the way back. Joe Dupree is there. Also, Redfield. Kujawa. They took a chance. Eric Field led the charge right there on the field blitz. Too. They took a chance in Field as well. It is Field. Eric Field coming wow, to get the tackle. Yeah, I thought it was Kajawa. My mistake. It's a big play defensively for the Erie Cathedral Prep. Not only do they stop him, but they pin him back for a loss. They get an extra cushion of about six yards from where they're going to take over this possession. They lost seven yards after being first and goal at the eight-yard line. Well, now they got to get a first down, and now oh. the Central Bucks defense coming up. Show Walter is there. Also there is Matt Carey. And Angelo Polina. Yeah, Polina in there again, and, and look at this. Rise of Polina coming through and just take it on one on one. That's just Mr. Pure Sanders. Yeah. Pure speed of Polina. Just blew right past the block. That's the ball carry in the backfield. Tick, tick, tick. There's your time remaining. That's the football game right there in quad. And you've only got one timeout left. You can't burn it here to stop the clock. So you've got to get three downs and out, or it's pretty much in the bag. Got a whistle, and let's see. Timeout Erie Prep. 25 second clock is down to four. They didn't want to take it penalized down here. Right. Every inch means everything. Here we go. 338 left. The West cause. They're going to get one more crack if they hold. If they don't, if Erie Prep gets a first down, it's a daunting task to get it back. Erie Cathedral Prep really helps Central Bucks West right here with that timeout, I think. You know, you wanted to use up as much clock as you can, so obviously you're not going to have much offensive time to work with at only one timeout. So right here, Central Bucks West gets to come up with a play as well and gets that clock stopped in addition. And the quarterback, Eric Carson, will have a good look at that 25-second clock. It's, it's facing him in the opposite end zone, so he's going to have a good look at that. He's going to let that baby go down to four or three before they snap that ball on each and every play. Central Bucks West had a first and goal right down to the eight. There's Mike Mitchler, 30-year-old 30 year head coach. Talking with Eric Carlson, the senior quarterback. But hey, get us a first down, and we might have a gold medal thing going on here. Central Bucks West and their fans trying to urge and rally their defense with their enthusiasm. Second and 12, handoff. That's going to be Jawan Walker. No gain. Callahan is there again on another tackle. He's been brilliant tonight. All close to the vest here. You see Walker just going forward, both hands covering the ball. He wants to make sure that the ball is the number one priority here, nothing else. 
There's a buck that doesn't look too happy right at the moment. Oh, but that can change in a big hurry. Yes, it can. Stirring come from behind victory last week against Bethlehem Catholic. Underneath 10 seconds left on the 25 second clock. Carlson back, throws, ball is held, oh. tipped up into the air. Incomplete, that'll stop the clock with 2.57 to go. And I'll tell you what, Ed Hinkle is going to make the most important punt of his life coming oh, up here. I'll tell you, some hearts were fluttering around this stadium Ooh. on that pass. Ted Kenyon with a great job of getting that right hand in there and breaking up the pass that time and forcing the fourth down kick. Kenyon will be the deep man. Henkel will be in his own end zone. He's a good punter, and he has a wind in his back. See if West goes after it. They do the block. It. It's black. It's touchdown. Incredible. It's a touchdown for Andrew Olsen. Covered it. Elsie oh, blocks he it. He kicked it right at him. He kicked it right at him. It was a low kick. It was like a line drive kick. A, oh, worse than a ground ball kick. Elsie got hit right in the numbers as he came straight across, and the ball never got up in the air. Hit yeah. him right in the numbers. Elsie followed it on over, picked it up, and dove into the end zone. Yeah. And Charles Rush is hurt for Erie Cathedral Prep. That's him over there at about the 12-yard line. Well, you said it, Jed, the most important kick of his life and maybe the most important block of the life of one Andrew Elsing, a 6'2", 200-pound senior who just became wow. a major hero if things hold up. Of course, we still have an extra point coming up, too. There is an outstanding talent. And Great young right man. Ankle. I met him earlier this summer, Mar. Be... What an He's outstanding. Just a yeah. super talent. Outstanding game tonight, too. What a turn of events here. Star player, and they make a special teams play. They've been close to him a lot tonight. Yes, they have. And they they really, they knew they had to turn it up. Going for two here. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think no, so. They're going to no. kick. They're going to kick. I haven't seen anybody make one this end, an extra no. point. Very difficult. The since wind. the first game yesterday. Wind's coming right at the kicker. Well, now in Tumulty with maybe the most important kick of his life to date. Tumulty, but Oreo, the holder, you never know. This is not an Whenever easy Whenever you kick. have a quarterback as a holder, he can kind of step out of there in a fake and do some interesting stuff. We'll see. Snap down. They're going to kick. It's up, and it is good. Central Bucks West leads 14-13, 2.52 left. See if we can see it again. Oriole did a great job of taking what was not a perfect snap there and yep. getting it down perfectly, and Tumulty able to get right into it. Watch this. Here comes Tumulty, set down perfectly, up, and that is pretty, perfect. pretty, pretty stuff for Central Bucks West. Win the way it's played this weekend. Those extra points are... Yeah, they, watch right here. They've been an adventure. There he is. Set it down, hold it, let it go up, and you can see the rest. Yeah, that snap came back, and it was uh, it was turned around the wrong way. Oriole did a great job. Yeah, Jason Dolick, he's the place kicker for Erie Cathedral Prep. He's got decent pop. Erie Prep will have the wind at their back, and they've got a dynamic Take a look. Here's the two game. Watch the block. Here comes Elsie. Right off the number, 20. He was about two yards away from the kicker. Not normally where you see a block occur. He's like, oh, thank goodness, that's the end zone. Hey, what hit me? <laughs> the football. On a play. That's where you're supposed to do it, is give up your body and dive over, get those hands ahead, and he got even luckier and hit him right on the stomach. Wow. Well, you got to watch the return guys here. Henkel, yeah. Walker, and Sanders know that the, the <laughs> They do the east-west thing pretty good. Plenty of time left. You got the win with you if you're in Cathedral Prep. They're going to kick it high and deep. Who's camping under it? Ball is down at Sanders. Step around move. Good positive yardage. This is a pretty good spot for them to start at the 38-yard line. They're not done yet. 2.47 to go. Each team with one timeout left. It's 14-13. Central Bucks less. Leads by one. This has been a problem all night for Erie Cathedral Prep. Indecisiveness on picking Punt. up punts and kickoffs. Punts and kicks, exactly right. Hinkle had trouble in a couple of punt returns. That time, that knuckleball would look, be a little difficult to corral. Three wide receiver set. Carlson's got a real good arm. 
Will he have enough time to pick it free? Pass for Hinkle is too high and strong. Good coverage downfield. He had a wide open. Garrett Mays. Woohoo. Down the right sideline. He let that ball go. That was a 40-yard bullet that time. You talk about a great arm, Jed. He really had something on that. Yeah, he threw that on the line. That was a good-looking pass. Just sailed on him a little bit. Like, like we said, now he's throwing touch. with the wind. Yeah. And, and that takes a, as much adjustment as throwing against the wind. 2.43 left. Delighted to have you along the Pennsylvania Cable Network all weekend for the Pennsylvania State High School Football Championships. Central Bucks West though right now. Everybody knows it's going to be a pass. You can pretty much tee off and come. Carlson back. Carlson looks. Going to throw. It's out there, and it is tipped. It's intercepted this time. It is caught by Kenyon, and he starts it back the other way, and he's got it all the way to the 44-yard line. The motions are running high on the sideline. Mike Petton was quick to come over and separate things along with the rest of his staff. Well, Kenyon and Henkel take it away for a touchdown in the first half. This time he wins the battle. A stake so important when you're trying to win a championship. Here you see the throw one more time and watch this battle downfield for the ball. Great pickoff again by Kenyon, who's played a wonderful Ooh. game back there tonight. I don't think for a second the CB West people weren't having a heart attack watching that ball being batted around back in there. That's how close it can get. Got a player down. I think it Pinion's is. Kenyon's the one that was hurt. Yeah. He got laid out. A little surprised the last the two the plays that they, that they tried to go so deep right away and maybe not go a little bit under the defenders and try to maybe do a little bit of running with that athletic ability. Anybody thought that Erie Cathedral prep playing finesse? Uh-uh. Yeah, they can play the smash mouth game of any we've seen. Block punt by Andrew Elsing is the difference in the game. Oriole perhaps, stays inbound. Perhaps they chose to run that second deep route after seeing how wide open Garrett Mays was, and they were maybe rolling the dice on another breakdown in coverage and maybe sending a receiver out. There's the pick. They got one timeout. They're going to get one last crack. Sorry, Mark. Garrett Mays was in that vicinity of the field when he was wide open on the first deep round. That wasn't as good a pass, though, as we no. saw the play before when he really had a great tight spiral on the ball. 155 and counting to go in the game. They got one timeout left. They may be able to get an opportunity to block a punt or get a return going if they stop them. Here's Warden, who's been great in this fourth quarter. Bounces off, has the first down, has sealed the deal, I do believe. Flags are down. Might be a mask on the other side. Will you talk about Let's a see. hero in the fourth quarter? How about Warden? Here comes the call. Face mask. Very prep. 15. And it's 15. the full 15. Bob Warden, a guy that you probably haven't heard a lot about, unless you're a Central Bucks West fan. Face mask. Here you're going to see the First face down. mask. Looks like DeMond Sanders going up high around Ooh. the head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No question. When you're looking that. out the ear hole, that's usually 15 yards. Six rushes for 36 yards for Bob Warden, averaging six yards a carry. Not too bad for what? Third string running back? I'll tell you what, Erie Cathedral Prep has given them all they could handle. They got one timeout to go. Touch a knee. And we're almost done here. I'll tell you, you got to credit Central Bucks West. Dustin Pashadi goes out in their second series offensively in the first quarter. The first series of the third quarter, out goes Dave Camburn, who was getting, uh, carrying most of the water on the ground for uh, Central Bucks West after Pashadi's injury. Pretty and effort by both back. these teams, no question about it. Yeah. A lot of heart laid in the field here tonight. Looking to see if Charles Rush is back in the field. I do not see Erie Preps standout defensive lineman. Tell Mike Mishler there's a contingent from Erie. The what a bucks. heroic effort by the Ramblers here. I mean, they were on the lead much of the night, and a big play was the block punt, which we'll see here soon, probably at the end of the game, is the, the, the biggest play of this game. See the CB West players starting to jump around a little bit. A minute and a half to Benton, go. I guess. <laughs> but it's 0 0 0, then we'll talk. Till then. Do you say, Gary, thinking of 100 ways it could all go wrong right now? Yeah, if you're a coach, Mike Patton, you already know that, that strange things can happen, and you figured out all the different scenarios right now. 
You want to make sure you take care of them. And everybody gathered around the quarterback. And down he goes. Just saw a shot of Dustin Pashadi, a guy who dominated last year's championship game. 236 yards on the ground tonight. All right, let's take, a look. let's take a look at the play of the game right here. This is the, the where the worm turns. Andrew Polina. Take a look. And there's Elsing. Andrew Elsing, rather. Elsing blocks it, picks it up, and all he's got to do is just turn to his right, stage right, and that might be a gold medal dive that he just made for the end zone. The extra point by Tumulty, and that's our difference with a minute to go in the football game. Do you see happiness on that man's face yet? No, there's a lot of concern no, still. No way. 16 undefeated seasons. Now three consecutive state championships. They let the clock go down to 49 seconds. It'll be third and 16. The only coach in the history of Central Bucks West, Mike Pettin, his son building a heck of a regime right now over North at North Bend. Bend. Right, Michael. No timeouts remaining either In fact, uh, the son's team gave Central Bucks West two tremendous ball games this season. Once in the regular season they met, once in the District 1 final. I was really impressed by a touching moment after the first Central Bucks West North Penn game when dad and son met in the middle of the field. And it wasn't any hugging, it was just standing there, shaking hands, looking at each other's eyes and saying, you know, it was a whole lot being said there. We all know when you talk to your dad and you see that look, you know what it means. Well, what a, uh, what a, what a scene here. They lose their top player, Dustin Pashati, to an ankle injury and they have just gritted it out, and they get a big special teams play. They've won 44 games in a row. But it's third and 16 here, and uh, we'll see. The, the Erie may get one last shot of the end zone. Erie prep, we'll see. They come in on Oreo, and now the clock continues to wind. It's gonna be a difference uh, about 16 seconds or so. A little less. There's nine seconds difference between the 25 second clock and the game clock. Maybe a little less. Actually, look at it, about 12 seconds right now. Wait, 12 seconds when it's down. No way do they kick the football or even go back to punt. There's the 25 second clock that they brought in here, so both teams could look at it. Now they're going to run up, and it's a delay of game. Took a little too much time. So 10 seconds now in the game. Dead ball. And frankly, this is a place where you want a delay of That's game ball. Offense. You want you're going to have to put it in play either way. So take the delay of game, right. maybe run about three more seconds off the clock, leave them with maybe seven. Yeah, he's going to snap it, maybe run around for a little bit, and then dive down. There's a but guy. They'll get one shot at the end zone. Saw Mike Missler on the far side, the head coach of Cathedral Prep. He's got nothing to be ashamed about tonight. Boy, what a game he's not. coached and what a game his kids have played. What a season they've had. Well, they're, they're you know, a great program. They're a coming program now. Absolutely. They've got a lot of great young talent. Anybody wanted to question that schedule? I think you got your answer tonight, just how good they really are. You want to you want take your five there, Tony? You want to take it back. What, what is this? Another delay of game penalty. <laughs> Don't want to go too far back there now. Well, they're within his range now, Carlson's range. That's what they want to do. We're going to see him run around. Whatever you do, do not fumble the football. They want to be tempted to run the other way a little ways. Here comes Oreo. We're going to bring it around. Both hands around, around it. And he'll go to about the 49 yard line. And they're going to stop the clock. Everybody looking up and saying, Where, oh, Why is the clock running? Saying it didn't start at the snap is what they're saying. So six seconds left. Well, you got time for the Ranger Hail Mary. They're right at 50 yard line here. They've got some speed merchants. We saw Hinkle wrestle a ball away from a defender to score a touchdown. I'll tell you what, CB West is playing it close to the vest up in the line of scrimmage. Blitz coming. Belina there. Is Carlson even going to get a chance? No. Game oh, over. Central Bucks West has done it. The trifecta. The gold medal for the third consecutive year. Championship 
championship game of the 1900s. Well, what an epic. A block punt by Andrew Elsing with a little less than three minutes left has given Central Bucks West their third consecutive state championship. Well, they say great defense always beats great offense. We're going to take one last look at Andrew Elsing and his block of that punt. Andrew Elsing, uh, the hero for a team tonight that really dug deep, Jed, in winning this championship and setting a record. And here comes Elsing. With 2.52 left in the football game. Right off the numbers. Blocking Ed Henkel's punt. And then coming up with it, touchdown. Do you think it's a little bit funny that uh, 20, isn't that the beginning of 2000? <laughs> Maybe a little prophetic. The last championship game of the of the century, and you know, uh, uh, the PIAA, PCN, and WITF have been uh, outstanding in providing coverage throughout the state of these championship games the past couple of years. And the pictures and the sound that you get in your living rooms are just outrageous. I mean, they, they, they are they are so good that it's actually better on TV than it is here at home. We've got a lot of people here in the booth watching our monitors and the coverage that the WITF PCN people provide for you across the state. So tip of the headset, go to all the people involved in providing coverage for the PIAA State High School Football Championships throughout the state. And of course, the uh, PIAA staff, Brad Cashman, the executive director, Dr. Bob Lombardi, Melissa Nash, for all that they do, and of course, all of their support staff and all of the uh, district directors who I've run into this weekend, and of course, the staff at the uh, here at the Hershey Park Stadium, General Manager Scott Mullen, Operations Manager Tom Stevens, and it's great as always working with you two guys. You know that. Thanks, so. Jeff. We'd love to work with you all weekend. Hats off to all the state champions and all the ones that didn't win state championships. We had eight winners here in Hershey this weekend. No for, question about it. For Mark Shuey, for Gary Sutton, our entire WITF production crew, and of course the staff at the Pennsylvania Cable Network, I'm Jen Donahue, Central Fox West. The legend continues. A 45-game winning streak, three consecutive state championships and who knows the national ranking that's still in progress as uh, they win an epic today 14-13 from Erie Cathedral Prep heroic in defeat nothing to be ashamed of there from the Hershey Park Stadium in Chocolate Town USA good night everybody You've been watching PCN's exclusive coverage of PIAA football championships. PCN's presentation of high school championship sports is underwritten by Montgomery County Community College. Education equals MC cubed. Pennsylvania Cable Television Companies, delivering local, state, and national sports programming. Homework help on PCN. Televised homework assistance for primary and secondary school students. And by a grant from James J. Durantz and Helene Barco Durantz. You're watching PCN, the Pennsylvania Cable Network, a public service of Pennsylvania Cable Television Companies. PCN is supported in part by Adelphia Cable, serving cable subscribers in Erie County and Rochester.